Really quick announcement. We're starting a Dynasty Fantasy Football League, a viewer league. If you want to join, tweet at us, at 3rd20 underscore on Twitter, or leave a comment if you're watching the video on YouTube. Like and subscribe as well. Thanks, guys. Third down at 20. What's going on, everyone? Episode 47 of the 3rd and 20 Dynasty Podcast. I'm JT, joined by Frake, Jake, Lunas. We are a little over a week away from the first NFL preseason game. It's only like 33 days until actual NFL action, regular season games. We're into it. We're into it. Um, Who's in that first got, preseason game again? Uh, I oh, believe it's Bucks, Bucks Cowboys. Oh, preseason? Preseason is. Um, I know I don't the Colts. Know, you're putting me on I the think. spot here, Lunas. <laughs> you're putting me on the spot. It I is just Cowboys who, Steelers. Cowboys Cowboy, Steelers. I just need to know who I'm ready to overreact off their performance uh cd lamb overall wide receiver one all right <laughs> so we've got a lot of news and notes uh you know it's finally starting to ramp up and then we're doing our last divisional breakdown the nfc north um perfect timing honestly with everything that's going on with the news and notes yeah. too so let's get right into it um starting off we'll, we'll roll in with aaron Rodgers uh, in a little bit but first one michael thomas saints um <laughs> Has another injury, expected to be out 8 to 12 weeks from now, which means – or is it 12 to 16? I forget. It's, I saw 12 to 16. 12 to yeah, 16, 12. which means weeks 8 to 12, I think, is when he'd be coming back um, optimistically around week 8, I think. Um, not great. <laughs> not great. What we were just talking about before the pod is we don't really understand. Uh, allegedly what happened was he was supposed to go and get surgery and get, like, fixed – and he was going to a doctor and, and saw a doctor once. And he said, you know, check up with me in like a couple of weeks. Michael Thomas never did that checkup. And then, you know, he found out <laughs> found out later on that he needs surgery, which is not great. Not great. Jesus if you're a Saints Christ. fan, you got to be extremely frustrated with that. Um, with that, like there's just random, random players on the Saints. Marquez Callaway, Deontay Harris. Uh, Traquan Smith is always there. Um, am I missing anyone else, guys? Kawan Baker um, out of Kwan South Baker. Alabama, I think. Deontay uh, Harris. I said Deontay Harris, yeah. So, yeah. basically, do you, do you think Michael Thomas being out potentially half the year like has an impact on which quarterback is going to start? Like, Do you think this affects the quarterback competition? I don't think it affects the quarterback. I'll let you go in one second. I don't think it affects the quarterback competition, but it definitely doesn't help either quarterback, like whoever the starter is, because who's their number one receiver going to be now? Like Trey Quan. One of those guys who just, yeah, Ty- right. Titus Camara, kind of. It's Adam Troutman. Troutman's definitely a winner out of this. Um, it's just I don't love. think any, I don't think there is a winner with Michael Thomas there is, out. There is, there is yeah. no winner. There is no winner. The other team's right defenses. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like um, you can be an offense that just doesn't produce a single fantasy relevant player. Now, I don't think that's going to be the Saints. And if we're asking who it hurts more of the quarterback competition, I think this drastically hurts Taysom Hill more. Someone that I really liked for a large part of this offseason is one of the main reasons why I sold James Winston in our league, just because I was scared that Taysom Hill actually was going to win that competition just because he, he's an underrated player. Dude, like, Michael Thomas was the perfect receiver for Taysom Hill's skill set, and now that's gone. Now, Taysom Hill still might be fine because he's a running – he has the ability to run. I mean, I imagine that even if Taysom Hill is the starter, there will be plays where Jameis Winston is on the field as the quarterback. It's just, geez, like, how does this offense move without them just pounding the rock on the ground? It's a brutal hit, too. Um, not only because of the time he's out, but you can't expect him, like, from a 12 to 16 week recovery to be like his first game back, be completely back to normal. Like, it may, it may take a, it may take a little bit of time for him to kind of feel fully comfortable again on the field. So, are you selling Michael Thomas? Because I actually think that right now, if I owned Michael Thomas, I would 100% be fielding offers just because. Dude, I don't like this Michael Thomas post contract. I, I like, I think I would have tolerated it up until now, but I think this is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of me owning him. I don't want to deal with this shit every year. It's just ridiculous at this point. It is crazy. Was, but go ahead, Drake. I was out on Michael Thomas 
-hmm. assuming he was fully healthy for this season. I, I didn't want any part of him. He's 28, 28 years old now. He's, you know, heading up to that that 30 mark, which, you know, in Dynasty Fantasy Football, people start to get a little wary of. Um, and it's hard to get anything for him. You know, guys like DeAndre Hopkins, who are 29, and, like, there's a whole bunch of other receivers out there, Julio Jones, who's 32, and no one really wants to touch him just because they're afraid there's going to be this cliff of just, you know, he's he's an old wide receiver. He's not going to put up those elite numbers anymore. And now you add in the fact that he hasn't played most of the past two seasons. I, I don't understand how anyone can be in. If I can get anything of significant value, I'm, I'm selling him. I'm done with him. I Like Frank said, I don't want to deal with any of it. Um, in terms of this, this Saints offense, I think there's a few, I want to say quote-unquote winners, because like Frank said, there's no real winner here. Michael Thomas takes the pressure off a lot of this offense and is going to allow a lot of this other other players to get open and, and be more elusive in the, in the open field because people are going to be focusing on Michael Thomas. But my quote-unquote winner for this is, is gonna, I think it might surprise a few of you. I think it's uh, Latavius Murray, actually. I think he's a guy that's going to get more more field time. I think he, you're going to see a lot of Kamara lining up in the slot, a lot of two-back sets, a lot of this, you know, I think Latavius Murray is going to see about 10 touches a game. And for a running back that a lot of people didn't think would be, have a major role behind Alvin Kamara, uh, I think he's going to see a lot more touches than people think just because this offense, like Frank said, is going to have to pound the rock and they're not going to want to give Alvin Kamara 40 touches a game between receptions and and straight up rushes out of the backfield. I actually do agree with your uh, Murray take because they're, they're going to have to bank on running the ball a lot more. And Kamara's never been the guy. He may get 20 total touches between catches, but he's never been the guy that consistently got 20 carries a game. Uh, so I agree with you with those like 10 to 12 touches a game may go to Murray. Um, on Michael Thomas, I was with you guys with before we even heard about this news selling him this offseason, uh, just to get away from this. But man, it's like if you sell now, this is really at like his lowest value. Like what what is well, what is we yeah, all had be. him, I'm That's pretty true. sure is underrated when the That's uh, what I'm saying. When the with now was, this what NFC would it South. if you owned him, what would you sell? What's the lowest you're selling him for? Like, what's the offer where you're like, okay, I'll send him off at this I, price? If I could pivot to Robert Woods straight up, I'd do that. I was looking at keep trade cut earlier. That's uh, interesting. He's, he's still ranked a little bit above Robert Woods. If you could tell me I'm pivoting straight to Robert Woods in one-for-one one deal, I'd do that. So what value uh, is that? Like an early second? Uh, Late first, I believe. I mean, yeah. honestly, Robert yeah. Woods or Cooper Cup, is, and maybe with one of them, if, if they're on different owners, you might try to get – a sliver of draft capital on top, maybe like a third or something, just so you get at least a little bit of value on top of that, still cash in on Michael Thomas. Um, See, I, the one thing I want to say, though, the one thing I want to pull before we move on from Michael Thomas, am I the only one that thinks that Michael Thomas could easily be cut? Not maybe necessarily this year, but like Really yeah, freaking well, soon. <laughs> I think uh, it's a very high chance. That contract uh, is huge. I, I was going to. They can get out of it with with minimal dead money. I, I I think they have to do it. I don't I don't think they want to deal with this. Last year he punched a teammate in practice. I think they're done with him as well. I just I think they're going to cut him. I don't think it's a if, uh, the dead money is going to be terrible. Yeah. But. Jake, we were we were banging the drum. I think Lewis was with us too. We were banging the drum to sell Michael Thomas then, and he was ranked like wide receiver five or six at that point. And we he was like, still a top it. ten receiver. Yeah, yeah, get away from Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas then. Um, the thing is though, like we to to kind of go back a little bit. Like I I think this really helps. I think Jameis is going to be a starter, right? I think uh, Taysom Hill is going to be used more in like that oh, utility God. role. What? I just pulled up the the details on the Michael Thomas uh, contract. Oh my it's god! But the thing is, the they Saints are already in cap hell. If, if they're able to cap cut him now, like or trade him, they have a quote unquote out in his contract after this season. But that still holds a twenty two point seven million dollars cool. dead cap. What's your golf dead even, cap? Even even if they trade him, they still have to pay that, right? Yeah. That Yikes! Cool. Like um, I, I don't necessarily think he's going to get cut, but there's definitely like, if you're the Saints, are you not questioning at some point? Like, okay, let's just eat it now while we're in cap hell, and then all of a sudden in two years we just 
really have, have a window? Have we need? I mean, I, I think so because I think they re- they're in a transition phase now without Drew Brees, obviously. I think they realize like they're not going to win an NFL championship this year. They're in a division where they're might finish I, third. I don't, dude, their their like, offense wasn't good last year though. Like their defense, they're a defensive football team right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Their defense is better I mean, than offense. If you think you can ride Alvin Kamara and a good defense to a championship, I, I think you'd be hard pressed <laughs> to find someone that would agree. Yeah, I mean, uh-huh. yeah, I agree with you there, but. Even with the giant contract, I still feel like Michael Thomas could have a market though. Like, I mean, the well, first I mean, team that... he'd have he'd have a market because the Saints have to pay that dead cat. So who are to, whichever yeah. team's trading yeah. for him? You're telling me like uh, the Colts wouldn't want him? I get that the Colts will need to pay like a bunch of like stud young guys soon, but like for this year when you could like make that real playoff push, you're in a division with you know questionable Houston Texans, like a rookie in the Jags, like. It's just you and the Titans competing for the playoffs. And then once you get in the playoffs, who knows? You guys actually did pretty well last year with Phillip Rivers. Um, now you're adding Michael Thomas to your offense and Carson Wentz. Like, I don't know. I, uh, selling Michael Thomas like. feels – I don't know. It just sucks. Like, the, the downward spiral, spiral for a dude who, like, it's a broke, what, he broke the receptions record. Like, two years ago. Yeah. Or three. Dude was the yeah. wide receiver – dynasty wide receiver one two off seasons ago. Like – or last off season was it not? I think it was yeah. two, but last off season he was still like in like that top six range, top seven. Exactly, range, yeah. it, it's what his down his downfall has been so quick and so surprising. Oh, man. Until... I think you guys are right though. Like last point, it feels like it's either you're selling now or firm holding because he's still above Cortland Sutton, and that seems like it's gonna flip really soon, especially during yeah. the season when he's out eight weeks, like. And you see all these dudes balling out. Yeah. I'm telling you, no, if, if I could still get Robert Woods for Michael Thomas, I'd 100% do that. Um, all right, moving on. This one I'll be, like, kind of quick on. Deshaun Watson, like, showed up to camp. Who knows what that actually means? Um, mm, no clue. The only takeaway uh, I did get from it is if he's good to play, it kind of, even though he requested the trade, it looks like he's going to play for the Texans. Um, if he's all good to play. Because, I mean, if well, he still really wanted out, he could just not show up to training camp. The, the only thing I'll say is it looks like the NFL is not going to get involved this year. I, I don't think know. that's well, why he showed up to training camp, is to see what – like, if you're his agent and you show up to training camp and the NFL doesn't suspend you, that would make teams want to trade for you now. To say, like, oh, well, if he's allowed to practice and then presumably allowed to play – if he wants out, he can get out now. I don't think he showed up to practice being like, hey, let's let's ride it with the Texans one last yeah. year and then get traded. Like, no, I think he's doing it to show the teams, like, hey, this legal stuff, like, yeah, it might be going on, but I can play now. So you're not just paying a crap ton of draft capital for me next year. You're getting me now and probably, like, what, a Ben Roethlisberger suspension for six games? Who, who knows <laughs> that's going to be? I have, a quick, I have a quick question about Deshaun Watson. Uh, to you guys, in terms of how you value him right now. And obviously, we have no idea uh, how the case is going to end up. We saw the thing, two more women uh, approach the police about it. Um, I don't think still any charges, but it's an ongoing case. Uh, if you say we took all the rookie quarterbacks from this rookie class coming in, like Lawrence, Lance, Fields, Wilson, how many of them would you rather own than Watson right now? I'm just interested. Just Trevor Lawrence. So you're still uh, taking Watson over like Lance and Fields? I'm not. If you could pick, I'd go as far as it'd be tough for me with Mac Jones, who's my Ooh. fifth quarterback. Because uh, so I you're taking, don't want. So you're taking yeah, four of the rookies like, ahead. Yeah, like I, um, I truly believe like this could be like like serious kind of consequences. Like I I I don't think you could spin this as like a good thing for Deshaun Watson. And honestly, not a good like. Thing. Yeah. Well, no, but We're I, I just think to. I, We're no, just trying I, to figure think, out the level of how bad it I, is. I just think there's no way for me to be like, oh, yeah, like, let me just give up Mac Jones, a player that I know will be like a, a starter, presumably on my team. Like, the, the unknowns with Mac Jones, like, don't hurt me as much as the unknowns with Deshaun Watson, where it's like, th- this guy could literally be in jail. <laughs> like, he could be like wiped off from the NFL for the rest of the time. I, not that I think that's what's going to happen, but like that is a possibility that I feel like people are not 
taking seriously enough. I'm buying. I am uh, buying. You're, you're wild, are, are, you ta- are you taking him <laughs> over every rookie except Lawrence? Uh, Zach Wilson would be questionable for me. Okay, so it's Lawrence and then... But I think he's over. right around there. Like, I think I... Dude, like, I think that Deshaun Watson's back, man. If you held firm, good for you. Deshaun Watson is back. I definitely think his price is higher I, I, like, I think it, like, what? Ago, it, it, I just think that it's going to get settled. All these, these women are going to get paid. And then... It's going to be, what, a six-game suspension? I can eat a six-game suspension for Deshaun Watson, dude. Like, I really don't think that he's going to, like, prison or anything. So I, I, think I just think you're looking – that, that, is, that is the best-case scenario is you, – you just said there, there's nothing that could be better than that. Like, in my opinion, from where it is right now, the best-case scenario is he just gets, like, a six-game suspension and, like, ends up traded to a good team. Like, I just – I don't think that's the realistic scenario. I think the realistic scenario is he probably holds out this year from the Texans. The Texans don't get a price that they want. Then he gets suspended the following year from the actual like claims. And then you just paid uh, Justin Fields, Trey Lance price for a player that you're now missing for two years. And he, can't hold the, he can't, JT, he can't hold out this year. If he holds out this year and then misses next year, he's done. That's he knows this. I don't... He, he knows this, so he's going to play. If it's with the Texans, he really he'll knows play. On, he, knows he, will, he knows this. So if if he if he's able to play, he's not saying no. Dude, That's we were talking answer. about Voldemort last episode. Deshaun Watson is Voldemort, yeah. and he's back. <laughs> he's not <really> back. <laughs> we got to destroy all the Horcruxes again. <laughs> Yeah, we, high, dude, they've, only, they've only destroyed like two or three horcruxes. Deshaun's got another like five to go. All right. He's yeah. chilling. All right. Well, I'm just going to take this next news and notes and just lead it right into the NFC North breakdown because you can't say the NFC North without our guy, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Why so is he our guy? None I'm of us are saying, Packer fans. No, none of us are. I'm just saying, like, uh, shut up. Shut up, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> There he is. Let me do my. Let me do my tra- back. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um. All right. Aaron Rodgers showed up to training camp. All of his value is going to spike way more from what it is currently. So, uh, we we have like keep trade cut rings as of like two days ago, and that was before the news c- came out. So it's kind of hard to adjust on a fly. Did not move but, that much? He's uh, up to thirteen. Yeah. So he's moved up five spots. I mean, I guess. We could do on the fly at 13. I feel like he's properly rated. Um, let me just run through him real quick. Aaron Rodgers, quarterback 13 on the Packers. Jordan Love, quarterback 29. Blake Bortles, cut. So rest in peace, Blake. Um, Vikings, Kirk Cousins, quarterback 24. Kellen Mond, 33. Jared Goff on the Rams. Uh, sorry, Lions, uh, 28. David Blau, not ranked. Justin Fields, quarterback 9. Andy Dalton, quarterback 45. Nick Foles, not ranked. So... Obviously, I kick it off with the Packers. Aaron Rodgers showing up obviously hurts Jordan Love's value because now you know you're waiting at least another year. Um, Does it hurt it that much, though, if now we know that this is going to be his last year? Like, there was always the chance he could stay for multiple years. Like, I feel like yeah. well, think- there was a belief, though, that he, this was Jordan Love's year, you know? Like, <sighs> maybe, yeah, I, there was a percentage yeah. of it, but there was also still like a decent chance that, like, Somehow they resolve it and Green Bay signs. I mean, Green Bay signs him to like a three year extension. Like now we know this is his last year in Green Bay. It's the um, last dance, Lewis. The last it's dance. The last and dance. The um, so it kind of evens out because there was a chance that it was uh, that this could have been uh, Love's year, but I wouldn't hate it if I'm a Love owner knowing that he'll have a shot next season. Uh, as for how that goes, no idea. Uh, I'm still not someone who has a ton of faith in uh, Jordan Love. Uh, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Well, there, there's a reason the Packers are like bending over backwards and trading for Randall Cobb. Like, I, I don't think obviously he's Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, hold, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you know, you I would say that could be because Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is really good, but like they are bending over backwards. Like they're not comfortable enough where they were with Brett Favre to just be like, all right, see you like go play for our division rivals or go play for the jets. Like we don't really care. Like Aaron Rodgers is still good. Jordan love 
they brought in Blake Bortles <laughs> to help boost their team. Like they had, um, oh, what was his name? Was it Tim Boyle last year? Tim something uh, was the quarterback last year who he was going to be the backup the entire time. So it's like, again, this is also Jordan Love who they did trade up for, but he was a late first rounder. We did a thing about second rounders on our, you know, uh, Twitter, third and 20 on Twitter, showing that like second rounders almost never hit. He, even after just pick 15 in the first round, like quarterbacks rarely hit. Like there's not a lot going for Jordan Love here. Then you're talking about Jordan Love is going to come into a team next year where who is their, their starting wide receivers? Like you have Devontae Adams, but he is even having contract disputes. Yeah. Uh, Amari Rogers, who Aaron Rodgers was like, I want Randall Cobb over him. It'd like, be so funny if <laughs> the first year, once Aaron Rodgers is gone, they draft a receiver in the first round. And it's like yeah, extremely I, possible. Th- th- there's like, there's some good wide receivers next year that I like, but I, am I convinced that the Packers are going to land one of them? I don't think they're going to finish high enough to finish, like grab the main guys that I like. Um, so that might be ending up with like a George Pickens if he declares, who I'm not as high on. Pickens is good, man. Uh, the injury JT would have been all over him. The injury yeah. history kind of does have it, it's got me scared. Um, um, the point is, uh, well, let's think we, we all of us put underrated for Aaron Rodgers for Jordan Love, all of us put overrated at QB 29. Um, me and Jake put him as our most overrated. Yeah, I'm just I, I honestly I don't think that uh Jordan Love is the long time QB for Green Bay. I think Jake agrees post Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I think we got a shot. I'm just not really a Jordan Love believer. My question is when's the last time a quarterback was picked in the first round and and didn't do anything for like two or three seasons and then just kind of like okay, Accident. one season's one season's good, but like I feel like once you start getting to the quarterbacks that didn't play a ton their first two seasons in the NFL, all of a sudden it's like, well, it starts getting a little yikesy. Yeah, well, exactly. Many- and that's and that's the problem here is if you're going to sit one year, fine. We've seen it work. Two years, we really haven't seen it work since Aaron Rodgers yeah, himself. Yeah, I was right? going to say, it, it wasn't like, Aaron Rodgers was the last one. So, and that was a long time ago. He was drafted in what, 2000. Four. four somewhere around so, that, yeah. yeah so it, like we haven't seen it in over a decade man like it's 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 just not Don't something wait. that happens i mean I, sorry. I, doesn't change much <laughs> anyways um if, if he's sitting the whole year which is looks which is gonna happen now pending you know aaron Rodgers' health obviously there is no way that the, the pa- after the season the packers is going to be like all right Jordan Love, hundred percent. I have a question I, I for you guys. It. Would you yeah. guys rather own Jordan Love or Kellen Mond right now? Kellen Mond. Kellen Mond. Jordan Love. No. You're still no. taking Jordan Why Love. Why are you saying me? I just <laughs> released a whole thing about all the quarterbacks that get drafted after the first round, and then you're telling me no, no. You're getting the next Geno Smith. You're getting the next. Um, I don't know, like Jimmy Clausen. Like that's Could who also Kellen be Mond the is. Next- could be also be getting no. the next Dak Prescott. No, D- Derek Carr was like the best quarterback draft in the second round. That's your best. Well, in the second round, but if you're including yeah. like if you're just oh, going no, past Kyle first, is a third round. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's a unicorn. Dak Prescott, Prescott and Russell Wilson are unicorns. Look how many quarterbacks are drafted in the third round. And her cousins, a unicorns. They just there's like three of them in the past twenty years. They're all just starting right now, though. Yeah, her but cousins. Kellen Mond is not one of those guys. Um, I think I'd lean and, on, but we'll we'll get into him in one sec now. Um, well, we might as well get into it right now. Yeah, I think that's our, next, yeah. our next team is is the Vikings here with Kirk Cousins at QB twenty four and Kellen Mond at QB thirty three. Every single one of us had Kirk Cousins underrated at uh, twenty four. Frank and Lunas ha- had them as most confident to maintain value. And me and JT had him as the most underrated quarterback in the entire division. Um, I personally just think this is a guy that finishes fringe quarterback one every single season. To have him ranked as a low quarterback two is ridiculous. It doesn't matter that they went out and drafted Kalamon. He's going to be a starting quarterback for the next five years. I don't think it's going to be in Minnesota, but he'll be a starting quarterback. So with that being said, to be you know, quarterback 24, that's just way too low for me. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, I know people worried about, uh, I believe Minnesota has an out in like a year or two. And it's like, oh, the money, even if he's not in Minnesota, he's going to start somewhere. He's a starting level mm-hmm. quarterback. He's better than a lot of quarterbacks that are starting next season. Um, so I pretty much agree with what you said. I think 24 is low, whether he's with the Vikings or not. Um, he's not bad. Oh, like he's not like a flash. He's, he's, he's not. He's not bad. bad. It's he's like he's, he's not, this guy that he's, the dynasty he's community. Guy. Just, yeah, exactly. He's the guy that, that the dynasty community doesn't want to believe in, doesn't want to put any faith in, and just consistently goes out there and puts up fringe quarterback one numbers anywhere from QB eight all the way down to like lowest QB fifteen. The guy is, he produces, he puts up numbers and, and he's going to continue to, he's not, you know, he's mm-hmm. obviously starting to age out a little bit. He's, I think he's 32, I want to say, but you know, he, he's still going to put that's, up numbers. That's fine for a pocket quarterback. He doesn't yeah. rely on his Exactly. He's anyway. not a guy that relies on his mobility at all. Right. So and, it's, and now, it shouldn't really matter. Now Dude, people are, are loaded are, offense. Yeah, exactly. Dalvin and those, and you know, Justin Jefferson and Thielen at wide receiver, like, come on, revamped the line him. as well. I mean, they, they've Smith, spent if he they've can had step so much draft year. capital the past couple of years. Like, I think that the the Vikings are like the low key Titans of the NFL. It's they have you don't have to be Patrick Mahomes to put up QB one numbers in an offense. You just you just have to literally be a smart quarterback, be smart, and just be Kirk Cousins, right? And you'll put up <laughs> low end QB one, high end QB two numbers. I think he's like the perfect contenders QB two or QB three. Yep. Yeah. Hundred percent agree. And now, now people are scared about uh, a player who has the same draft capital as uh, Will Greer, Mason Rudolph, Davis Webb, CJ Beathard. I'm literally just reading sequentially: uh, Jacoby Brissett, Cody Kessler, Garrett Grayson, Sean Mannion, Mike Glennon. Finally, you get Russell Wilson and Nick Foles, but then Terrell Pryor, Ryan Mallett, Colt McCoy. Kevin O'Connell, Trent Edwards, Charlie Whitehorse, Hurst. Like, there's there's no one good in these in the third round. Kirk Cousins. Have. You've got you've got Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson, and um, uh, who did I Dak just say? Prescott. Nick Foles. Dak Prescott. No, oh, was Dak in the third? Dak Dak was Dak, the he was, Dak was Dak was the fourth fourth. rounder. Yeah. yeah. It's the same shit though. Yeah. Sure, third, but fourth, like second, all right, maybe second's different, but. Kelamon's a B. All right. I hope Kelamon proves you wrong. Uh, I'll get Kelamon jersey if he does. If he okay. ever puts up a, a quarterback 12 number, because quarterback 24, like if, you, if you're if you a top 24 quarterback, that just means you started 16, 16 games and were healthy. Pretty if much. he puts up a top 12 quarterback, I'll get Kelamon jersey. I'll get like a vintage one. I'll go. I'll fly to Minnesota and go get to buy one? by him. No, okay. I'll go get, oh, to get <laughs> it signed. <laughs> yeah. He's not putting up the top 12 quarterback number. Okay. That's going to be a cold take. Uh, hot take All right, Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Quarterback uh, so he's at QB. Tw- that's I'm not a Jared Goff guy, but that's low. Yeah, uh, he's, he, let's, QB 28 is low for someone who we know is going to be the starter all of next season in Detroit. My, my issue is it's the same one with Sam Darnold where it's like, they're not going to be in a high enough position to avoid a quarterback. I don't know if you can hear that lightning, but there's thunderstorm going on by me. Um, the, the Lions are going to be right there drafting the quarterback. And maybe they they sit behind Jared Goff for a year, but like Jared Goff's going to be moving to another offense at some point, or he's going to be the backup guy. Um, that's just how it's going to work. So I get why he's so low. I think he should be a little bit higher um, just because I still think he has a chance uh, to kind of turn around, but looking around, I can't really justify moving them up much more. Like, is are there any quarterbacks around him that you guys would move Jared Goff above? I don't even uh, think it's about that. He's just super underrated. Like, we've seen quarterbacks that were drafted high in the first round that put up really spectacular seasons early in their career be able to turn it around when they move to a new team. It's not impossible. It's just I think the big problem is that right now that Detroit offense is just terrible. I mean, yes. the Detroit team just seems terrible. <laughs> I mean, so he's... odds are they're going to win, like, what, five games at most, and they're going to be picking up there. And all of a sudden, if 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 there's a sick quarterback on the board, what's stopping them from, from picking him up? Nothing. I will say, though, he's probably going to have the best offensive line he's had in a while. 
The thing yeah. is, though, the thing is, though, like when you think about the Detroit organization, this seems like a team that is they they want to build it from the ground up. I mean, you saw this draft; they only took offensive and defensive linemen. I would not be surprised if they have a very high end pick to see this team take like a pass rusher or another dominant just non quarterback instead of trying to b- get the quarterback first then build. This does seem like the time the type of organizations like hey we need a roster before we need all the flashy stuff you know let's just build this from the ground up which to me i don't know about you it gives me confidence in jared goff that they have the gm that drafted him they have a a group of people that's that are from the saints one of the teams that are the best at actually developing players so to pay quarterback 28 price you don't even have to spend a first round pick for a guy that could be starting there for three seasons plus is pretty nice. Like where you're paying Daniel Jones price. And listen, I think that Daniel Jones, he's probably cheaper than Daniel Jones, but at the end of the day, Daniel Jones, it's like, dude, he has a very make or break season this year. You know, you could like the, the risk for Jared Goff compared to his price doesn't really make a lot of sense. And the guy has like, we've seen it before. He made a super bowl. This guy doesn't suck. He's a number one overall pick. Um, yeah. uh, no, I know. I agree with you. Um, it's not a sexy buy, but to pick him no. up as a QB three is a very, re- like a really solid. We should do that in our rebuild league. Let's buy Jared Goff. <laughs> like, honestly. I'm in. The price is just too cheap. It's, it's like, it's playing with free money, honestly. Pretty much. I wouldn't say free, but yeah, the opportunity cost is not it's not high to go out and get Jared Goff for what could pay off. Um, all right, last team. No one cares about David Blau. Sorry, David Blau slash family, if you're watching. Um, okay, my okay. guy, Justin Fields uh, on the Bears. I think they've already said that he's the quarterback, too, right now for Chicago. Yeah. Classic coach speak. I mean, Trey Lance, they just came out and said that, too. Um, so I, I think it is weird if you're – you could draft him late round redraft. I think that's a, a solid play and just, you know, wait out like six or so weeks until he actually starts playing. Um, I think this year, I'm not really expecting a whole lot from Justin Fields. Um, next year is when I'd be. So could be a good, you know, wait like till mid season and go for a buy if he has not really shown anything. I don't know how many owners would really waver, but if you he do have those kind of shit, guys. People probably just paid a top five dynasty super flex pick on them. Yeah, like, but, you know, if if you see like the, I mean, I'm not like a Najee Harris guy, but like if you see like the the running backs going off and you see a wide receiver is going crazy that you drafted him around, Trevor Lawrence is going to be I starting think, from I, one, I think. So I think in startup startup super flex drafts, Fields is kind of going at like the end of the second, early third. I want to say with more towards the end of the second. Yeah, yeah you're so, giving up a wide receiver one for him. Uh, yeah, at that price, I don't really love it right now, especially with, like, I, I get that there's a big risk baked in, but I do truly believe that Justin Fields is the second quarterback from this class. Um, and there's a lot – there's enough buzz on Twitter right now and Reddit where it's, like, why did well, – however many teams – 10 teams pass on him? Why was he the fourth quarterback taken? Why why did Denver draft a corner? Um, there, there's enough of that going on. Why do you think his price might be? Uh, of course, now there's an ambulance going on. We just I'm, I'm not GT, it's, Ken, it's just freaking <laughs> mayhem over there. I'm not. Bro. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not comparing him to this like just player wise. But I do remember the same things being said about Deshaun Watson. Like, why wasn't he a top three, top four pick when he entered the draft? I'm under attack by lightning. I'm gonna be yeah, no, I, I saw that argument on Twitter as well. I think that there are a couple things that people need to to realize. A the exact pick of where you go does not matter. Falling to pick 11 is not falling extremely far. Yeah, no. At, at the end of the day, all right? And I'm not even a Justin Fields truther. I'm avoiding him in, like, all of my leagues. But to say that he fell to pick 11 is, like, a bit – like, I think Mac Jones's fall was a little bit more like, okay, what the hell, than Justin Fields is to a certain extent. Because, I mean, Mac Jones went – outside of like the top 14 picks which to me is like where the red flags start to finally set in um the other thing too 
And this is kind of more, so that, I don't want to spend too much on this, but like when people say, oh, well, trusting the NFL, they took Rager over Justin Jefferson. Dude, that is one team that did that. Like, and there are teams, I don't know why everyone just assumes that all the teams are just as good as each other at drafting. No, like there are teams that kind of suck at drafting. So yeah. don't lump that. Like, dude, if the Vikings were at 22, they were taking Justin Jefferson. They weren't taking Rager. Like, you saw the video. I'm not sure if anyone else saw it, but there's a video no, of their were, draft They were happy room, that like, Jefferson fell to them. Yeah, they're like, what the hell? Ju- Justin Jefferson's here? <laughs> Shit. Well, sweet. Let's take it to the bank. Like, <laughs> look at the range. Don't look at the specific pick. Yeah. Um, I couldn't agree more, Frank. And I was going to say, like, yeah, if, if you don't like Justin Fields, don't have a B because of the draft position. Pick 11 still very high capital. B because you either don't like someone with this game. But, yeah, I wrote O next to him. Uh, I still like him. I prob- I view him still as a top, I'll say top 12, top 13 dynasty quarterback. Uh, I didn't make it as, like, my main over it. If just if I could move him two spots up or two spots down, it'd be two spots down. Um, I, I think he's who a lot of people want. Jalen Hurts to be this year, like I. Well, Fields' value is a lot higher than Jalen Hurts. Well, but in redraft and stuff, it's, it's obviously flipped because. Oh, redraft! Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he's who people think like the really high Jalen Hurts truthers are. Like he's who they think he is. I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna I, trade Justin Fields for a more stable quarterback if I can. There's not many that like. Around that area, that are like Russell Wilson's probably the I only guy. Russell Wilson's I would take one. right now Russell Wilson over him. I would. I mean, I just like Zach Wilson. Um, Russell Wilson's an easy buy over him, and then um, I mean Joe Burrow's close, but yeah, you're probably not getting Burrow, dude. Even Rogers, I might take Rogers to be honest. The thing is that I could get stuff on top of Rogers for Fields, and and sure, that to me sure, might be the sure. kicker, just because I, dude, Rogers is a beast. I'll take. I I still might even take Deshaun over Justin Fields, to be honest. That one's close, um. But yeah, so that that's my rank. I'd probably have him around like QB eleven. Uh, and then Andy right. Dalton at QB forty five. We're all just kind of now nah, Andy Dalton. Um, yeah. Does anyone think how many games does Andy Dalton get? Just quickly around oh. around the room, how many games does he get? Uh, more more than he should. Is, Andy, Andy Dalton actually put up two QB one seasons. I, I learned that today when I was doing some research on. Yeah. Early on, three he was fine. There's just yeah. a little past few. I like Andy yeah. Dalton. I don't. I don't really like him, but that was just my little fun fact for you guys. I, I don't think he starts. Much he, more he did not four. look good last year. Um, I well, he did towards the end of the year. He, they started putting it together with like yeah. one of the worst offensive lines at the time in football. I don't. I don't think you should judge Andy Dalton off of the Cowboys season from last year too harshly. I think that Andy Dalton could easily start like ten games for this Bears team. I don't I expect it to happen, but like my whole thing is, I, I think that people are going to try to copy the Patrick Mahomes model. Right where you, I mean, you can call it whatever you want, model, but I think the most recent obvious success is Patrick Mahomes, where you sit him for a year behind a veteran quarterback that's good. I think that the the Niners are especially doing that because they like Jimmy G, like the Chiefs at the time liked Alex Smith. It's just at some point you kind of have to go for the big tuna. Um, I, I agree with you, and I think it'd be a higher chance of that happening. If not the coach and GM being on the hot seat this season, I think one of their best bets at keeping their jobs long term is starting a rookie quarterback. Not starting him the whole year, but showing some promise at the end of the season, being like, "Hey, we kind of have something going with this rookie." I mean, right. yeah, but you have to assume that you're out of competition. I mean, are we just assuming no, that no, the no. Bears are going to suck ass? That didn't see, even Lewis, save that, Anthony Wynn, though. See, Lewis, that's where you're wrong. If you don't start Justin Fields at all, it buys him. It yeah. buys the coach and GM time because they're like, "Yo, hold on, hold on, hold we on." Didn't even we start got to... this. We got this JT, guy. Uh, that's a good point, JT. Yeah, it didn't save you. You drafted either. like the next top young quarterback. I didn't save him. And they're just like, "Sweet, now we can attract a new coach." Like, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> the difference I'll say with the Herbert thing is so many of the Chargers situa- uh, problems were outside of the quarterback position. I say the quarterback position has been one of the main problems for the Bears over the past couple of years. Uh, besides that one year, Trubisky had a good year. What what saves uh, Nagy and them their jobs is making the playoffs again when they really shouldn't. If they keep doing that, you just can't fire them. And the mm-hmm. best way for you to make the playoffs is not by starting a rookie quarterback. Because if we're going to start using data analytics, like, dude, rookie quarterbacks do not have success. I don't care how good of a prospect they are. Like, they, they just don't. You, you, it is very rare, and you usually have to have an insane roster. They don't have the best roster in their division. They might not even be top in the top half of their division. You can make an argument the Vikings and the Packers have a better roster than the Bears. I think they do. Um, I just I don't know I don't know if Andy Dalton's getting that done for you. I think your best bet is to have a, a good performance by a rookie QB. But, I um, think that's the bait. I, I think that's the bait. We'll but I think they're going to take the bait too, though. I think that that, that staff is going to take the bait. Let's move That'll on to running backs. To all right. Um, running backs, I'll just run through them all again. Um, starting with the Packers. Aaron Jones, running back 16. A.J. Dillon, running back 32. Kylan Hill, 80. Dexter Williams, not ranked. Then to the Vikings, Dalvin Cook, running back 3. Alexander Madison, 41. Ken A, I'm going to screw this up. And Wong Wu. <laughs> run back and 87. That's tougher than Tug of Iloa. Uh Lions, DeAndre much, Swift, much run back tougher. eight. Yeah. Jamal Williams, run back 47. Jamar Jefferson, 64. David Montgomery on the Bears, run back 19. Tariq Cohen, 57. Damian Williams, 86. Khalil Herbert, the rookie, 68. Um that DeAndre Swift line is the best thing ever. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It's so funny. We'll get there eventually for the listeners, but let's start with the Packers at the top here. Uh, I don't even know what we're talking about. I'm, I must have We're talking about, about Aaron that. Jones and how right. he's, for Jones some is reason, 16. always the most underrated player in fantasy. From a dynasty perspective, I, listen, man, I have no idea what to do with Aaron Jones just because it's never it, – it feels like it's never going to be worth selling him because he's just always going to be a top five running back. It's not. I can I can tell you as an Aaron Jones owner in terms of I've tested the market out for him a couple of times. Um, I just think it's always going to kind of be that way. Everyone's going to kind of be expecting an Aaron Jones because before it was always Green Bay's not going to bring him back. He's not going to be as good in another offense. Green Bay's not going to bring him back once he's out of before his offense. He's going to be bad. He gets the extension. I don't think his value has really moved at all. Um, so I think he's thing, mostly a hold. His value is definitely up from last year though. The thing I think is the thing with Aaron Jones here is that people want to look at all the red flags, whether that's going to be in the past, his contract situation, whether that's right now, it's Aaron Rodgers last season, whether it's, you know, drafting AJ Dillon last year, like there's always been red flags around Aaron Jones. And that's what's kind of holding his, his dynasty value down. Um, But with, you know, Rodgers coming back, A.J. Dillon, we saw last year minimally. Uh, Aaron Jones is going to be a top 10 back again, pretty much for sure, as long as he stays healthy. So I think the time to sell Aaron Jones is midseason. People are going to – some running back is going to go down, and someone's going to want a running back really, really bad, and Aaron Jones is going to be sitting there as a top 10 running back for the rest of the season, and you'll be able to get almost whatever you want. And that's the time to just pull the trigger and say – Peace. I, current players on keep trade cut that are ranked ahead of him. Um, Ezekiel Elliott, CEH, um, Najee Harris. I'd rather have Aaron Jones than all, all three of those guys. So Here's I the thing I'll say with Aaron Jones, him. though, because, Lunas, I am also an Aaron Jones owner. I took him – me and Steed took him in the original yeah, Dynasty podcast team. We picked him up at pick 411 exactly, and his – Startup ADP is like from what I've seen firmly in the third round. And dude, I, I've been drafting Aaron Jones in, in fantasy leagues for like the past two or three years. And I wasn't even a big Aaron Jones guy when he first started coming up. I thought Jamal Williams was better, but dude, his price was always good. Now, right now, with Aaron Rodgers finally reporting to training camp, if you want out on Aaron Jones, now is the time. Because listen. Yes, he's. I think he's underrated. He's a phenomenal player. 
but he is finally getting credit. The past two, dude, he went he went after freaking Kenyon Drake last year. All right, that's underrated. Going in the third round, around like just after guys like Antonio Gibson, is not underrated anymore. Maybe very slightly. But if you want out and you and you think that Aaron Jones is just an average back that's a product situation, dude, like now is the time because you can argue hey, Aaron Rodgers is back. He's a locked and loaded, basically top five running back in terms of fantasy points. Like Here's the now thing, is the if, time if to sell if you want. It. If you're selling Aaron Jones, what would you want if you were to sell him this offseason? Because I don't think you're going to get what you want to get. Um. You'll get a first, a second, and a player, and you'll be happy. Like I don't even think you're getting that. I don't know if you're getting it. I think that you could you could trade him for like a D hop. No, probably if, not. You're you're pretty close. I think it's close, but I don't think so. I think Maybe not straight up, but you can you could definitely get Allen Robinson. Um, yes, probably yeah. I, I just think that you can transition him into a receiver. Um, like, I think, you, I mean, if you like them, like Cortland Sutton or Jerry Judy, you could probably get them plus for Aaron Jones. Yeah. That's I really not that. a bad deal. If you like, if you're scared about his longevity, you, I feel like you can trade him into an asset that you believe more in long term. Not necessarily that, like, if you're a contending team, dude, I would keep him because he's a phenomenal running back. He's going to score a lot. But if you're worried about maximizing value, well, maybe you just take the mulligan one year and say, I'm going to maximize value and get a draft pick and a good young receiver or a stable veteran receiver that has a good three-year outlook. It's not guaranteed that Aaron Jones is going to fall off a cliff. But, dude, I'm an Aaron Jones owner too, Linus. I don't like whatever's going to happen after Rodgers. I'm very scared of that. <laughs> I think everyone is, and I think that's the problem. And I think that m probably is going to be built into the price even now, like with with uh, Rogers reporting to camp and knowing I think he's that's going to the be reason it's sixteen. Season. I think there's still a big black cloud hanging over Aaron Jones' name, and it's it's not pretty. And that's why I think you, your best bet is to hold him a little longer, wait for some injury to happen, and then pull the trigger on a panic move by somebody else. And you'll be able to get what pretty much whatever you want. I don't know. I think now with Aaron, with the because Aaron Aaron Rodgers just reported. There's that like now the Aaron Jones like you know he's good this year. Like I think he instantly to some people at least jumps Zeke. Like if if we're gonna look at yeah at the keep trying to cut guys, I I'd think for a lot of owners, Zeke. maybe not everyone, but there are owners where he definitely jumps Zeke. Um, I think that there are owners where, for win now, he jumps even Clyde Edwards Hilaire and J.K. Dobbins, who he's below. Or Probably you can get does. a pretty similar price to those guys. So I think that if you want to sell, it's now. But if you're a contending team, don't sell them. Sorry, I kind of just hijacked that. No. Um, no good content. A AJ Dillon, I'm as we all have him as overrated. I mean, to have him as a top three too. I do think he's a backup to own. Uh, just simply um, because I I'm love just, him if, if if the if the like not that they not that they don't like him, but if the Packers were extremely confident in AJ Dillon, they wouldn't have paid Aaron Jones all that money. Yeah, I think there's still people that are hanging on to. I wrote it in my evaluating the 2020 running back class on um, thirdandtwenty.com, where you're really just going off of one game for Aaron uh, AJ Dillon, and it was just one game against the Titans where it was just like a snowy game, and they just ran in a bunch of times, and Aaron Jones was out, and the Titans, like Chris Collinsworth was even saying it, like the Titans like were afraid to run around in the snow, like they didn't want to like slip, so they were just getting like pushed downfield. So it, it's kind of like a, a messed up sample size to go off of for AJ Dillon. Um, I, I'm not too optimistic about him, but as far as like the other backup running backs in this in this division, I, I didn't really think there's another option. So there's backup, the, but but I don't hate it. him. It's just RB thirty two is expensive for a dude yeah. to have one good game. Like yeah. he's at the and same he, price as Damian Harris, who had five good games. And <laughs> and Damian Harris is like almost like Set up definitely to be starting yeah he's almost mm -hmm. definitely starting i don't know if aj dylan will ever be considered the Apparently, 16 AJ games Dillon is higher than cam Akers, which blows my mind 
That's where I start. Yeah, that, that's no that I, at that I price. I'd be take Cam Akers. Yeah, I thought yeah. in in the NFL now, where the trend is not to pay running backs big money, um, the Packers doing that uh, when they could have easily kept AJ Dillon and signed Jamal Williams for significantly cheaper. Um, I thought the Packers giving um, Aaron Jones it was forty something million, maybe like forty eight million, uh, was kind of telling about how they view AJ Dillon. Not that they don't like him, but that he's not at that level where a lot of people are probably hoping he is. We also have to remember that the Packers do use Aaron Jones as an H back to a certain extent in a lot of their sets. He's not a super traditional running back that they'll line him up in, in some funny spots and some interesting scenarios. Yeah. Um, but I'm saying the games that Aaron Jones is best. Jamal Williams doesn't do a terrible job replacing him when uh, Aaron Jones is out. He's not nearly as dynamic, but he doesn't do a terrible um, well, I just I think AJ Dillon is better than Jamal Williams. No, I think I think um, AJ Dillon will get majority of the carries. I just more mean some of that receiving work, especially from the H back spot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. All right, so Kylan Hill, Dexter Williams, liar too. Kylan Hill, Trash. rookie. Um, both get him, all, the board. all right, Vikings. I'll see you later. Dalvin Cook, running back three. We all have the uh, overrated. Yeah, um, but he's he's gonna be a top five back. It's it's more he's, just like, he's he's quote unquote under overrated just because we had to you pick have to over pick or one. under. Yeah, and like I said, if I had to move him up, I don't think I could, but I could move him down if I want to. I think he's properly valued at this moment. Yeah, he's he's a top five dynasty running back to sum it up short. Jake, Jake, you have Dalvin Cook in our, our league. Do you think you would be able to trade Dalvin Cook straight? for some of the guys ranked below him. Like, I'll throw you out the names right now. Um, Dalvin Cook for Kamara straight. Do you think you could get that done? Yeah. You could, he could get that done, but I don't want to get that Cook. done. I, I wouldn't do it, but I, uh, yeah, I was going to say. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think I, you can. Like, Dalvin Cook for Saquon I, straight? I don't know if you can. For Saquon, maybe not, but for Kamara, I'd, I'd rather have Cook. Yeah, you want to know the annoying truth about Dalvin Cook? What? Dalvin Cook is not a top five running back in the league in terms of talent. He's just not. I think he's damn close, but I think that CMC, Saquon, Kamara, Chubb, and then I I think the last one's Henry. I think that they're just all more talented than Dalvin Cook is, and to a certain extent, Dalvin Cook is a product of a really good opportunity. Not that he's a bad player. Like I have Dalvin Cook in one of my leagues. I think he's a good player, and I'm not – necessarily saying that you should panic sell him or anything it's just i think he's more of like rb6 or 7 than he is rb3 in terms of pure talent i like my argument is that if you put nick chubb on the vikings he has just as good of numbers as dalvin cook it's just the browns aren't trying to give nick chubb a thousand carries a game they're they are Interest, I mean, partly is because they have another super talented back in Kareem Hunt. It's just Dalvin Cook, he's in a great situation. He has the volume. He's in a good offense. Like, all the stars I mean, kind of align. That is part of dynasty football is where you're playing. Um, yeah, but things change quicker than talent does. I mean, the talent difference to me is – that's what sure, that's a good time. argument. I'm, it's I mean, sure, close. he's running back six compared Chubb. to three. Okay. Yeah, like, no, he's just, still a top 10 talented back in the league. It's not like you're saying he's a top, top – he's, he's, he's like 20th. Dude, if he's not top five, he's top six or seven. Um, I don't understand. That is a pretty big jump for me. Going from RB3 to RB6 or seven is like a pretty massive value jump for me. You you go from being one of the, the top, top running backs, giving you the – the peak competitive advantage at the position to just Whoa. being an average but RB1. But that's the thing is that he produces at an RB3 pace, despite your, I'm just saying For one year, he has, gonna, basically two, two, two full years of being top you're, five. You're not helping. You're not helping the argument that some commenters have been saying, Jake, where you only defend your guys. Um, um just that's just that. not me. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually, I, I with, mean, I'm with Jake on this. I, I, I don't think this is stud. a crazy take. Yes, I have Dalvin Cook, but Dalvin Cook's a flat out stud. If you want to yeah. say he's the sixth most talented back in the league, sure. But fantasy isn't based on talent. There's plenty of well, receivers my, that my are very is, talented that don't put up fantasy points. He's a 25 year old running back who it's does benefit 25. a lot from a good uh, situation where you have like a lot of young up and coming guys who are about right behind him, where I, 
if I could pivot off Dalvin Cook to one of those younger guys, plus I, I would do that unless I really thought like this was my the, my main. The guys you just named in in, in Kamara and Barkley. Those aren't are even the guys I'm pretty talking much about. the same oh, age. Those aren't even the guys I'm talking about. I'm talking Stop. about the J.K. Dobbins, the DeAndre Swifts, the Antonio Gibsons. Um, sure, if you wanted to do that, go for it. I that, think Dalvin Cook provides I'm a much pivoting. more. Dude, I think I'm, he provides I'm, a stronger advantage. Well, you're I'm, the guy who preaches uh, sell too early before too late. I think this is I, perfect I, sell too early time. Dude, sure, Cook. You're, you're right. It is, but I, I that's not that wouldn't be my move to go to those guys. I just but I just don't like those guys as much as you do. So it's very understandable. He's so fil- and he's only had two seasons with over two hundred. With he's only had two seasons with over um. 150 no two seasons with over yeah, 200 the other, two, the other two seasons he got injured like if he gets injured again this year what happens to his value where is his value right yeah, the yeah. Thing I mean, is, you're not yeah. going to be able to do i'm not going to deny this is... jt was saying earlier is that you're not going to be able to go from dalvin cook to camara saquon i mean me you could do henry mm-hmm. but yeah i mean that that doesn't make That's any sense you, you can right? get yeah. you can get camara you cook. could you could do chubb but like is it like I'm not sure most people are going to want to do Cook for Chubb straight up giving up Cook? I would, but I'm probably not going to get anything on top for me to make it worth it, you know, aside from me just liking Chubb more. Um, Listen, the red flags are Cook, there for Cook, Dalvin, and I, I do preach trade, you know, sell too early rather than too late. And this is a the prime time to sell Dalvin Cook coming off two top – top five running back seasons, and, and you could probably get a whole lot. I, so I'm not going to say it's a bad move at all, but I do think Dalvin Cook is properly rated at running back three currently. That's all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. See, where, where I just want to come from is that, like, if we look at his keep trade cut value at 7,500 compared to Nick Chubbs at 6,500, that's why I want to sell Dalvin Cook. Not because I think that Dalvin Cook is a bad player, but, right, but I then just you go don't have him as a that. top five back. Like, if you have him valued, if if the consensus is that he's a top three back and a consensus first round startup pick, then that's why I want to sell because I can get a value premium getting off a guy that I wouldn't take in the first round. He is kind that's, of that's that's kind of my argument. For a startup too. And I, it's a very fair argument. Like I said, there's a lot of red flags with Dalvin between his injury history, his age, his. It, you know, just there's a bunch of red flags there. I'm not going to deny the red flags behind Dalvin Cook, and they've been there for a long time. Um, but, I, like, if you can get a guy like what Frank said, and you can get Chubb plus another, you know, high draft pick so, or another high caliber player, I think that's worth it. I like Nick Chubb. I would do that. To, to, to kind of wrap this all up, I'll give you guys, like, this trade, and, and you tell me yes or no. Jake, you have Dalvin Cook. Frank, you have Antonio Gibson. And you have to add on Elijah Moore to that trade. Are you doing that? No. Jake, are exactly. you doing that? Are you doing that? Yes. Yeah, sure. So, but that's what Keep Trade Cuts currently uh, saying that you could get you could get an Antonio Gibson and an Elijah Moore for Dalvin Cook. Right, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. But one. that's the but that's the haul you have to get. I don't think I think you'll be hard pressed to find the, the Antonio Gibson owner that's like, yeah, I'm going to tack on my high end second round pick here. For if if my get. team is in full on competitive mode, then I might do Dalvin. I would say I could see I, could I might see someone actually who's do a that. top contender doing that because just going all in. Well, you're also taking a guy. I think the Antonio Gibson's overrated too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't necessarily disagree, but I think that's a good player to pivot to. Right? Yeah, and you're right. You're right, right. Let's, let's right. We're, we're, well, we're taking Ma- a while though. Yeah, so Madison again. again. I, I think someone. I'm the only one who likes up. Madison. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of want to. I want to so look into. Would, I want to look he's into not players a top 50 running start. back. I want to look I into like players, him. like like Frank was talking about with quarterbacks. Like I want to look into players that don't start for two three years at the running back position and see what they end up being. Um, which we should do a study on later. Um, and then like Frank, you like you, you could say his name because you like him a lot. Um, I like him too, but oh, I don't Keenan say his Wong name. Wu. No, I don't really love <laughs> yeah. Keenan Wong Wu. Um, I just think that I hate Madison enough that I. If I could get him oh, gone for right. free, then I'd take him. Okay. Um, so right. I think I think Wong was a really interesting player for a lot of reasons here, just because he tore his Achilles at school. So I think it seems to be in the news a lot recently with Cam Akers, and he came back and posted a four three at his combine and had an amazing um, 
He tested really well jumping wise and all that kind of stuff. He's a guy that was behind Montgomery at Iowa State, behind Brees Hall at Iowa State. This guy has really never had a, a, a opportunity as a running back. He was a all a uh, Big 12 player as a kick returner. He's that he's a super athletic guy, and I think he's a guy that if Dalvin Cook were to go down, I think him and he would get a bigger chance than a lot of people would would give him credit for. So he, I have him as the backup to own in this division, actually. I, I don't know. We'll we'll see what he ends up being. Uh, I, also, I said he's underrated at that price, just compared to everyone else. Oh, it's underrated at that price, but I'm not a well bank. at the price Cam Akers currently is. I think I would. All right, let's just move on. Let's move on. Um, this one we kind of beat like into the ground at this point on this pod. Just the constant back and forth of my DeAndre Swift love versus all of your guys hate. I just um, can't go oh, I with, defend my own I, I just, oh. JT, he's, JT. he's the only one that I go to JT, bat for like every JT, single time. I, I just I just can't go as high as eight. That that's the, my issue. I, I like I, him. I could go as high as five. <laughs> like I You think are crazy. I'm not I've said that I've been so consistent on this fact since since so like before I even had DeAndre Swift, I was saying he's a top five back. I uh, it's just the hate towards DeAndre tell Swift. Me, is tell me, tell me. Tell me when DeAndre Swift kicks in. CMC, no. Jonathan Taylor, no, Dalvin Cook, uh, no. Well, as far as as far as dynasty wise, from from a dynasty standpoint, I don't think he's as talented as Dalvin Cook right now. But he's he led the rookies in in targets. He's like four years younger. Like there's a lot going in DeAndre Swift's favor than Dalvin Cook. He was one of the guys I said I would pivot from Dalvin Cook. I'm not. If Jake came to me one one on one like. I'll give you Dalvin Cook for DeAndre Swift straight. Like, I'm saying no. I mean, it, it doesn't help my team, like, the current status status of my team for me. Well, to do I mean, it, it depends like, on the situation of your team. Yeah, I mean, if you're but, in, like, a full but, just, yeah. but, but in most – If you're a contender and some I'm guy comes to you uh, I think it's pretty clear, dead. dude. If Yeah, if you're – at least in JT's yeah. perspective, if you're a rebuilding team, get DeAndre Swift. You should value him as a top five back, and we all disagree. Let's 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 move on to Jamal Williams and Jamar Jefferson because I think this is the more interesting discussion of our because <clears throat> Jamal Williams is priced as if he has a possibility of being somewhat relevant, and Jamar Jefferson is priced like yeah, as a high. relatively like I mean sixty four is not a terrible price to be completely honest like that's a relatively not a high price but like he's a drafted player in the fourth round of your draft probably. Yeah, I just think Swift and Williams, at least for right now, maybe Jefferson next year, it's different when Jamal Williams leaves. Um, Jamal Williams is still pretty talented. Uh, yeah, like I, I said, he's going to see the field. He's going to see the field. I think DeAndre Swift is going to be the main guy, but I don't think DeAndre Swift is going to be like a complete workhorse that gets like 25 touches a game between the carries and rushes. I, I just don't like, all right, maybe the. Um... Was it maybe the line like, I think, down? I think DeAndre Swift is going to kind of get similar touches to what Kamara got in New Orleans. Sure, but Jamal Williams is going to then get most of that Latavius Murray like kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, I, I just think that the time you're seeing Jamar Jefferson is when the lines are down like thirty points. And just oh no, I'm, ta- like... I'm talking about I'm talking about Jamal Williams. I'm not talking about Jamar. Oh, Jefferson. you're talking. About, oh, I thought I've been talking about. Jamar oh, Jefferson. Yeah, so, no, I don't think Jefferson's going to see the field either. I was talking about, no, I think Jamal yeah. Williams. Jamal Williams, Williams will see the field. What are you taking, Jamal Williams or pick 304 this year? 304. As in, as in the current 2021 class? Yes. Um, who's a, Nico Collins is probably gone by then. Uh, Josh Palmer might still be there. If Tylen Wallace is there, I'd probably take Tylen Wallace, but otherwise. Probably, but it's really close. I'm taking 304 yeah. pretty easily. Same. To me, it's close. Um, I'm, I'm leaning. I'm leaning 304. I'm selling like this entire back situation probably. Uh, I'm obviously high on the one guy. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's go out. on to the Bears though, because right. I think that David Montgomery is pretty undervalued, not by a huge amount. Um, I just think that he's the kind of dude that, I, for some reason, he's left a bad taste in people's mouths. Um, I don't know what it is, but. I mean, he had a fantastic year last year. Yeah, it was an easy schedule, but if you had David Montgomery towards the end of the season, you were probably pretty happy, and, and he was scoring you a lot of points. And for him to only be RB19 is pretty 
you know, I just find it funny that he had such a good year. And then you have someone like Miles Sanders who had a very down year from when he was projected, yet he's still below Miles Sanders, I'm pretty sure. No, or he's right above. Pretty he's right him. above he's Miles above. Sanders. But, yeah, same same point. I mean, um, the, the players that are around I, I think, him are – uh, I think please. he's overrated. Yeah, that's where I was too. He's right I around like Devontae Williams and Miles Sanders. I'd rather um, have both those and, guys. And with, and with the Miles Sanders comparison, uh, Frank, you were just talking about talent. I think Miles Sanders is the more talented running back. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and I think Sanders is going to have kind of a way better opportunity next year. I thought I thought how they used David Montgomery last season, especially toward the end of the season, was perfect. Um, versus I think Sanders was kind of in a weird situation. But I'm not going to focus so much on Sanders. Uh, with Montgomery, I'm looking at keep trade cut now. He's RB19. He has Javante and Etienne and Mixon as the three ahead of him. He has following Montgomery from RB20 to we'll go 22. It's Jacob Sanders and Kareem Hunt. Um, you make those next three really behind him are talented. Yeah. The, the only guy there that I'd take Montgomery over is now. I don't even know if I'd do it now. I think I'd still take Jacobs over Montgomery. That's what um, I'm saying. That's why like I think I, I would say, too. I think I take yeah. all three of those next three. Cunt, I you're, think, is, oh, is no, definitely you're more on talented. crack if you're taking a backup running back. Well, no, with, with Hunt, <laughs> with Hunt That's true. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at Kareem Hunt's talent. I just think. I, I think. I think Kareem Hunt's still like, in terms of running backs in general in the NFL, probably wow. top twelve most talented back. Um, he has what one year more? One more year in Cleveland. He signed yeah. a two-year extension. Wait, you think Kareem Hunt's a top twelve talented back? I think you can make a case for him. He's very talented. Maybe top fifteen. Dude, I get no, it. When he if, was the starter. If he was that talented, he wouldn't have signed to be the the other guy on the the Cleveland Browns. If he, he was, gone and... if he was a starter on a different team, I just think he liked the fit. If he was I mean, a if starter, he didn't kick that chick. He probably would have been, or whatever he did to that dude. Girl. Yeah, like dude, he was going off as the starter in his career. And how I want to pull. He wasn't up going off on the Browns when he was a starter, though. He's playing exactly I, the same. I, I, I want to. I want to see. I want to see the games how he did with no Nick Chubb, but he it's was, the same. No, Linus, it, you could. Look, I mean, if you want to argue scene. about having good stats, well, David Montgomery kind of just destroyed him last year. So, yeah. like, I don't understand what you can go from the talent thing. Like, yeah, yeah Kareem I, I, Hunt I is not that. a top twelve talented back, but I don't think David That's Montgomery is either. All right, top fifteen maybe, but uh, David Montgomery and him are close. They're they're the two close ones, but. I'd still have all those other guys above Montgomery. I think he's fine. He's actually like, if you need that third running back, um, you know, to really boost your depth and team, I think that's a great spot for him. But like, if you're going into the season with him as your RB two, and you think you're gonna like go and compete and win the championship, I I, I still like I still I really so. like Montgomery. It's just, who those how much. Well, I think um, part of it is that all the running backs in that tier from like 16 to 22 are all good undervalued players. Yeah. I think that's part of it. No, I agree. Yeah, well, they're all the guys that like they're solid, but they're not like the young, flashy guys. They're not yeah. the top cream of the crop guys. So they're kind of just Except stuck for in Javante. That. Cause like, I mean, we all yeah. think that Javante is a stud and is undervalued. So like, kick him out because we. We would all have Javante probably around the top fifteen running backs in in all of Dynasty, mm-hmm. um, or maybe at sixteen, right? Like right around there. Um, I think David Montgomery is, is like maybe he's not necessarily super undervalued on what number he's ranked because yeah, I can see a, a great argument for Miles Sanders or Josh Jacobs. I probably have Montgomery ahead of Sanders behind Jacobs. But I think that all three of those guys, including Montgomery, are just really good buys at their price, especially for JT's point. Like, dude, if you need that that third running back, whether they're RB2, RB3, if they're just, like, in the mix for your RB2, RB3, right? Obviously, if he's, like, clearly your RB2, then that's a problem. But if you have Miles Sanders and someone else and then you go and add David Montgomery, that's perfect. Then you have, like, that's two true. RB2s. That both are capable of finishing as like a higher end one. Um, for me, it's just like what what David Montgomery are you getting? Are you gonna get the first half of the season David Montgomery, or are you gonna get the second half of the season David Montgomery? Because the second half of the season David Montgomery 
from weeks 12 to 17 was ridiculous. The lowest he scored from in the final six weeks of the season was 19. We also have to GPR. remember, too, though, that he the went first crazy half at the, of the season for the Bears, their quarterback play was atrocious. That's also true. The first true. three or four games, That's also true. Mitchell Trubisky, I don't think, saw all 11 players on the defense. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you put Nick Foles in. Nick Foles kind of shits the bed because he can't move anymore. And then you put your bitch back in. It's like, holy crap, here's the dude we drafted to be second overall. And then that kind of made the whole offense click. All right. Um, Tariq Cohen, Damian Williams, cool. Tariq Cohen, get him out of here. He's he's done. He's on the PUP list now, too. Um, I think he's getting cut. People, the funny thing with Tariq Cohen too is this is the biggest one of the biggest baits in Dynasty. Is if you point to the contract too much, that's a bait because the contract was their value X amount of years ago, generally speaking. Tariq Cohen, they would not offer that contract to him now. They, if they could go back in time, they would have been like, dude, no fucking shot. <laughs> yeah, but, that's right. Like yeah. he's gonna get same thing with Michael Thomas probably. Like, yeah, Michael Thomas is a good player at the time. It's a good contract. Dude, now the Saints are like, dude, fuck that. I'm not doing that contract. Get out of here. I actually Don't just follow switched the Herbert. I switched Khalil Herbert to an underrated. Because I forgot that I did I do like him as far as like a, a draft prospect. He's goes. the backup to own here, is Khalil yeah. Herbert. Um all right. Moving on, receivers. We're talking the Packers with Devontae Adams, who is wide receiver five. Then we've got um, Al Lazard, wide receiver 86, Amari Rogers 66, Equinemia St. Brown 135, Marquez Valdez Scantling 102. We don't have Randall Cobb on here, but he just got traded today, I believe. I don't know if it's official yet. It's but, not official yet, but so, yeah. But he'll probably end up here, not ranked. Um, Justin Jefferson on the Vikings, wide receiver one, M. Thielen 46, uh, Emir Smith Marset 118. Old BC Johnson, 147. Myron Mitchell, DD Westbrook, and Chad BB, not ranked. The Lions, we have uh, all these great guys. Tyrell Williams, wide receiver, um, 93. Brashad Perryman, 95. Amon Ross St. Brown, 59. Quintus Siva, 77. Say Surratt, 132. And finally, the Bears, Allen Robinson, wide receiver, 14. Darnell Mooney, 44. Riley Ridley, 157. And Daz Newsom, 114. And Demir Bird, not ranked. And they just traded um, Anthony Miller away. So, starting off with the Packers, we all have an overrated. Can I, can I start with something? Go ahead. Um, I put this in our group. I wanted to get your guys' thoughts. So, Devontae Adams, obviously, um, one of the most talented receivers in football, year in and year out. When he's healthy, he's top five. Um, that's with Aaron Rodgers in this offense. If you're trying to sell Devontae Adams for peak value, and obviously if you're a contender going for a chip this year, I understand keeping it because he's going to put up another phenomenal season. He'll be a top five wide receiver. Yeah. Healthy. Yeah. Unless you're a contender. Like, even if you're just a playoff team, but not like like the top of the top where you legit think you can win a championship, I think now might be the time to sell at peak value. Like, how much do we like to... Because it's not a guarantee that Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones are going to go to the same team. To, I mean, not Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is going to go to the same team together. If anything, I think it's kind of unlikely. Because um, whatever team signs Rodgers is going to use most of their cap space on him. Uh, and Devontae Adams is going to require around like 20 mil or something. And so how much do we like Devontae Adams if he's in a different situation? Like, let's just say he's like in Oakland. Like Oakland. Yeah, that, that's what I can guarantee you. Aaron Rodgers is going to Denver. Devonta Adams is going to Oakland. I think those are probably the two yeah. most likely landing spots for those guys. And so, how much does his price drop in one year? Uh, Amari Cooper was still solid on the Raiders. Uh, his uh, first, not, season, not yeah, but season. not anywhere. Uh, I, I near agree there. with you, Linus. I'm out on Devonta unless uh, he's going to get the the D hop treatment in your leagues. Um, then I would sell. Like, if you could legit think he's get a get wide receiver treatment, five price for him, go ahead. I mean, I, I would sell. I like. I'm sure there's contenders in your leagues that you could get a like two first four or something for him. Part of the problem uh, is that I don't think that the Packers offense is going to have another 50 passing touchdowns. And I think that not that might hurt Devontae yeah. Adams more than you'd think because I actually think that Tanyan is going to get more of a market share of that total offense next year because he's just. I think he's a good player and he's undervalued. Devontae Adams, on the other hand, I don't think it's just going to be a one-man wrecking crew as much as it was like last it has year. has been. Yeah. yeah I, 
I so really I wanted like your guys' thoughts. I know Frank's kind of with me. Are, are you guys, and again, unless you're like really going for the chip, well, well, unless you really think you can win the chip, are you trading Devontae Adams? It's thoughts? weird. It's weird because like you look at him, I, I just think like CD Lamb's starting to get like really overrated right now where I don't even know if the CD Lamb owner would say yes if I'm trying to like trade Devontae Adams for CD Lamb straight. Well, CD um, Lamb's viewed as like what wide receiver nine, right? Well, yeah, that's the there. thing. I yeah, wouldn't, seven. I wouldn't He's force wide a seven. move, but I would seven. shop him. Like if I can move down to like Terry McLaurin and get like a good value plus on top. No, of Terry if you McLaurin. if you can if you can get like McLaurin and maybe just like a small pick next to, or even I don't know. Or like, I, 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 I wouldn't be I wouldn't be yeah, surprised I, if by this time next offseason McLaurin is valued more than Devontae Adams. Well, what's crazy is you do kind of have to, you're going to have to start looking for those like next top guy. Like obviously you've got the Justin Jefferson and AJ Brown and, and DK Metcalf kind of still is there. Um, the you next guy is like McLaurin, DJ dude, just Moore. Look what happened with D hop though. Like this dude had wide receiver four year, 160 targets and is attached to one of the, the flashier offenses in the league yet. Isn't that he's had four top five finishes in a row and is only, and is still under 30. And he went down in price outside of the top yeah, 10. Yeah, he's wide receiver 11. What's going to happen when, when Devontae Adams is not on the sexy offense in the league, hits 29 years old, even if he did finish top five? Like, if you're a team, even if you're trying to win the championship, I think that receivers are a lot more replaceable than people think. If I could move him just for, like, two halfway decent receivers, if I could move him for... I don't freaking know Mike Evans and someone else, another receiver. Mike Evans and Juju, maybe. I don't fucking know. Maybe Juju's not the perfect example, but like, just split him up into more and into one stable dude and one one Mike little. Ev- Mike Evans kind and of one guy. of the Moors. Yeah, give me a more. I just tweeted out today. Give me more yeah. Moors. I want all the Moors. <laughs> I I would do I would do a uh, a trade of this would be even according to to keep trade cut. I would do a trade of Devontae Adams and Michael Pittman for T. Higgins and Brandon Ayuk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like that that kind of trade. Like, if you can get some kind of trade where you can trade Devontae Adams for like a DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, uh, and maybe get something small thrown in with that, even if you don't get some small thrown in with that. Like, if we're projecting like values this time next offseason, say McLaurin and DJ Moore have the monster seasons we predict they have, Devontae Adams has another monster season, then goes and signs with Oakland as their number one. Um, he's going to be 29 then. Uh, he's still going to be open. I don't think it's a one, death sentence, though. It just depends it's if not you a really death want sentence. to hold I'm just talking him. about max value. It, like, it, you have to be ready for him to be de-hopped. You have to be ready yeah. for him to put up another top five season, him to move to a scenario, like Lutus is saying, where it's really not terrible. Maybe he doesn't have wide receiver one or two overall on the year upside anymore, but he's still a wide receiver one. You just have to be ready to be like, hey, I, I, he's just on my team. Like, are, are you going to be competing for the next four years? Then go ahead, just keep him. Like, it's not worth trying to play the gamble. But if if you're a team where it's like, ah, oh, maybe there's a shot I won't make the playoffs and stuff. Like, yeah, you're right. You probably just want to max value him if you can. I, I'm not saying to mm-hmm. force a deal. You just, I would be shopping. Yeah. Um. All right. I have an overrated tag on all of these other Packers receivers. I, I, I like, like- Amari Rogers. Uh, I think Amari Rodgers, yeah. if the Randall Cobb trade goes Aaron through. Aaron Rodgers doesn't. <laughs> um, I, I think it's so overblown. Aaron Rodgers just wants a guy he can trust. He just wants yeah. an outside of Devonte Adams. He wants a guy that, because like, if you remember with James Jones, that was the thing. Like James Jones was not a, a superbly talented receiver, but he and Rodgers were on the same page. When, he, when, when James Jones went to the Raiders, he finally got over 100 targets and had, like, the worst year of his career easily. <laughs> Goes back I to the Packers that. when everyone thinks he's washed and puts up another good season. It's like, that's what Aaron Rodgers wants to do that he's on the same page with for those crucial moments. If it's a third down and a crunch time, let me yeah, – like but- Larry Fitzgerald last year for the, for the Cardinals. Like, you're not going to rely on Randall Cobb. You just want him for those clutch plays. The the thing about this these guys' prices though is that they're priced expecting Aaron Rodgers to be with them, especially right now where they're going to start seeing a little bit of a peak. Where this is probably the only year that they're going to be with Aaron Rodgers. Like uh, Amari Rodgers, you're getting him at, as a rookie where he's probably not going to see a whole lot of time in this offense, and, and then 
he's not going to have that quarterback there. He's probably going to have Jordan Love throwing them where – I just I don't like Amari Rogers at, at where he's currently ranked. I don't like I don't, Alan Lazard where he's ranked. I, I, the guy I was going to bring up was actually Lazard. I like him more than 86. Um, Same. I think 86 is a little bit too low for him. I thought when he was healthy last year, he showed some flashes. I thought he proved that he's definitely better between him or MBS. Um, he's better than know. MBS. Yeah, but for me, but like a like decent – Yeah, he's, decent he's like amount. a wide receiver three, though. No matter what, like at most, that's Alan Lazard is a wide receiver three. But one last thing about Mario Rogers, though, is that if people in your league think that Randall Cobb really impacts him and you can get him at a semi discount, oh, yeah, that's true. Then I, I would like go that. in for him because, like, well, like, I'm not in love and love with Mario Rogers, but I think that there's a nice little value opportunity there. If, if yeah. he's if you're still drafting your rookie drafts and he's following the, like the mid to late third, like. Yeah, I'd take a flyer He's on great there. in the third. If I can get him yeah. in the third, um, I'd I mean, love he's to probably going Rogers. mid-third. I, st- I think point. right now he's more talented than Randall Cobb. I know Rodgers wants Cobb just for the trust factor, but I don't know if Cobb at this point in his career is better than Amari Rodgers. Yo, um, Cobb's only yeah, 30 years old. Like, you could have told me Cobb was 37. Yeah, but phys- physically he looks older. Yeah. <laughs> he just physically is um, not nearly the same. It's All just right. they need Cobb for that scenario. It's third down and seven, and you know Devontae's getting yeah. doubled. And yeah. we have we have a sight adjusted route. I Aaron Rodgers and Randall Cobb are going to be on the same page. You don't know like what's going to happen with freaking Alan Lazard or or Equinemius. <laughs> MVS is probably going to drop it. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah. He's like, not even the Equinemius isn't even the best Saint Brown of the division. He's not. That's cold. It's, it's closer than people think, though. Um, oh my just god! Because I'm not big on. <laughs> but disrespectful. Um, all right, the Vikings, in my opinion, it's Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, and then just nothing really. Like, you have some rookies that the, could show the, things. The, the disrespect to Smith Marset, you asshole. To tell me your favorite thing about him. <laughs> <laughs> tell me your favorite thing about him. He is His fast. vertical quickness. He's fast. Yeah, yeah, he's fast. Yeah. He's fast. Zoom. Boom. Goodness. Right to the top. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Right Lewis, to the top of the rankings. Fuck, boy. Lewis, Lewis, I'm giving you seven seconds. What team did Amir Smith Marset play for in college? One. Fucking uh, two. No, no, three, I remember the jersey code. Four, fuck, fuck. No, 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 no. Five, it starts with that. Fuck. Six. I don't want to say the wrong seven. one because that's what it was. Know, yeah, I, was I don't because I yeah, didn't want to say the wrong me. one. No one cares no. about Amir Smith Marset. <laughs> no, I like him though. I was just scared of saying the wrong one because I figured it's be better Frank. not to. Frank's the only guy here that likes him. Frank sold me on Smith Marset. Yeah. <laughs> Frank sold me on him. I became a believer. He's from Newark. Fun fact. You get him um, based like he's a guy that has some nice traits. You can get him basically for free. Yeah, I, I mean, at the he's price of like wide now. receiver 118. Yeah, you can get him in a fourth round of terrible. a draft. So. Yeah. Not a whole lot of. But I mean, this is just that, the, I this the Justin Jefferson Adam Thielen show. Like, yeah. I'm so mad at myself. I was, of... I was... oh, sorry. I was just gonna say I was between Minnesota or Iowa. I was like, I don't want to say the wrong one. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> thing is, he also played an offense that really didn't help out his stats a whole ton. I'm of the opinion that if you're if you're good, you're good. Like they'll build the team around you. I and I, I was at Ohio I was State. like a good enough team where they know. I mean, yeah, he was I mean, a decent player for him, dude. Terry, Terry McLaurin is the one outlier. Look at this play. Look at this play on stream. I'm going to play it on stream. Does this don't show up on YouTube? Too? I don't know. Yeah, it shows up on YouTube. Okay. Look at this. Look at this burst here. Bang. I'm watching delayed, Dude. so I can't even. That is a nice burst. Split those two players, get in the end zone. He didn't get touched on this play. That, like looks, nine that looks guys more like tackling. bad defense than anything, though. They like no, look at this. To... Look at this. He's literally from a standstill. And this, beats is, this, those is gonna two suck, guys. this is gonna suck for podcast listeners. That that one good, number ten didn't even cut in on him. There's no pursuit. Yeah, because no he didn't expect the quickness. Like that's from a standstill position. That is insanely quick. Uh, all right, you're showing one highlight play though. I just that's no, not listen, enough. I don't, for me I don't to got buy time to go yeah. through the whole thing. <laughs> well, all right, but let's uh, let's talk Jefferson and Thielen first. Like Thielen, so, how many more years do we think? Uh, is he gonna be like wh- how many more years? What? That he's like a worthy I mean, of like a 
Like he'll he'll be that he's startable. I mean, he's gonna be startable for like the next two seasons. But like in terms, his I think his wide receiver one one days are are behind him. Um, I think this is this it. I mean, he finished wide receiver one. I'm pretty sure last year. Uh, The thing is, he's so nasty in the red zone that he's yeah. Yeah. Everyone's screaming touchdown regression, but dude, he's the guy to go to. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it also helps that now Justin Jefferson is the alpha of this team where, you know, Bears and Packers and whatnot, where they're giving him the wide receiver yeah. one um, treatment. Dude, this so, offense so have, is good. Yeah. This offense is a fun part. Like, that's the reason why I like Kirk Cousins, too. It's like this offense is probably going to put up a lot of touchdowns, probably going to put up like 40 total touchdowns plus. Like, it's a. A lot of points to be scored. They can, they can, they can. I don't know the right words, but have a lot of fantasy relevant players. Yeah, I, I like a, I, I like their prospect for this year at least. Um, Justin anyway, Jefferson and, is he the wide receiver one? Yes, I have, yeah. I have him wide receiver two, but I, I think who is going to be wide receiver? Uh, AJ Brown. AJ Brown. Uh, Jefferson already outproduced him and. AJ Bate, uh, Justin Jefferson's the unanimous the, wide the, the, receiver. There's, one. I get that the Vikings don't seem like a more of a passing I, I put, team, I but put, the Titans I put are not C a passing because team. I do think value wise, he's going to be treated like wide receiver one. Like if you're trying to trade him or buy him, I think value wise, he's going to be viewed that way. If you just ask me for my personal preference, he's kind of like a 1B to AJ Brown's 1A. So I am usually heavily against drafting receivers early um, in the first round, especially. Of startups, I am, you mean? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of selling when a receiver reaches this tippy top status to go into one of the more underrated players. Justin Jefferson is not one of those players that I would sell. Justin Jefferson to me is a legit talent, Hall of Fame level talent. I he's the wide receiver one, and even if I got the wide receiver one price, I'm still holding on to him no matter what my team is. All right. Um I guess no one else really. Frankie like Myron Mitchell, right? Uh, yeah, Myron Mitchell's interesting. So this is a dude kind of like Amir smith Marset. I actually noticed Myron Mitchell when I was watching Austin Watkins for UAB. And I was like, well, whoever this other receiver is, is just like really freaking good. And it turns out that he was actually one of the draft eligible prospects this year in Myron Mitchell. I think the problem is that this, this Vikings receiving room is super crowded. But it is a team that has an emphasis on developing players, and I really liked Myra Mitchell's film. If you thought Amir smith Marset was free, I can guarantee you a good amount of the Dynasty community does not know who Myron Mitchell is or where he played. So he is super free. If you have large rosters, I think he's a good little pickup. Yeah, uh, Myron Mitchell is currently – oh, I thought this would be easier to find him on um, Sleeper. But whatever. Um Moving on to the Lions, just throw your dart at which guy is going to be the one to produce from this offense. Quintus oh, Cephas. We have That's basically how it's going. I'm yes. the only one who likes Amon Ra. Yeah, he's I, just overpriced. He's priced I at, yeah. I I like him as a prospect. I like I said, I had him as. as you a, think you he's know, overpriced at fifty nine? Prospect. At 59, I'm not paying that price. And he's probably going to – you're going to have to pay a higher price because someone just just took him in a rookie mm-hmm. draft. Like, I, I just think he's overvalued in terms of price. In terms of the actual talent, I think he's very good. And he's a guy that, you know, is likely going to see the field because this receiving core is just trash. My, um, Myron Mitchell I think him is – see- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Yeah. Him Meyer and Mitchell's own in three percent. Three, three percent dynasty. I'm one oh, of those okay. guys. I think in two yeah. leagues. Fra- Frank, I, Frank I, I thought you said you liked Myron Mitchell <laughs> more. I, I thought you were saying you no. liked Mitchell more than Amon Ra. Oh no, no. Here's no. the game you have no. to play. Do you want Amon Ra or do you want Corey Davis? Because if you want Amon Ra, then no, go ahead and Corey draft Amon Ra. If you want Corey Davis, then you're gonna have to wait for and pray that Amon Ra is there to you at the very end of the second round. Because to me, Corey, Corey Davis is worth like a mid-second round pick. Yeah. And if you like Amon Ra, you're gonna have to take. If you want to get him consistently, you got to pick him basically smack dab in the middle of the second, or else a lot of other guys. Like I saw him go in the early second in some of my leagues. You know. So that's the game that I have to play. Like, do you really think he has that top fifty kind of guy, 
or are you staying away? Um, I, I'm not. Simple I, as that. I'm taking him later, second, but I still like him. And yeah, but he's probably not going to be there. And like most, of I'm, I'm going. Later I'm second. going based. On, he's wide receiver fifty nine. I'm thinking he is. Yeah, but that's three, like Corey Davis is not fifty nine more valuable. But a, a mid seconds, a mid seconds, a mid second. Fifty four, fifty nine. He's a mid second. Yeah, there's no difference between fifty four and fifty nine. Ra- I'm trying to think who in that range I'd rather own Amon Ra than. Like Amon Ra versus Michael Carter, I think I might take Amon Ra. I'm, I don't like either. You put probably like the two players I like. <laughs> you just like that spot. <laughs> what about yeah. what about Amon Ra or Tony JT? Amon Ra. <laughs> I just like what Tony's like a whole lot later. Najee Harris, I'd have over Amon Ra. Amon Ra or Devonte Smith. Yeah. Okay, Monty so Smith. we like in any of these Tyrell Williamses, the Brashad Perrymans. Um, Tyrell Williams is my guy that I think like. I could... like Perryman more than Tyrell Williams. If I had to take, I'd take Tyrell Williams, but I don't like either. I don't like Tyrell Williams coming off that injury, and um, Perryman at least has shown little things here and there over the last two years. Uh, they went out. No, and no, him. Lunas. He showed something in your soup in your championship. Run. He won me a championship. Yes, that's, I do. that's, that's the only reason. That. That. <laughs> this team that is, is the like only the, thing you have. This team is like the dirty shoelace of receivers. Yeah. Like you only really need it if you need it. You know, would, would you rather Other than the, that? It's a dirty shoelace. Would you rather the Patriots receivers or the Lions receivers? Oh God, do I have to pick? Yeah. Does that include tight? Actually, no tight ends. That probably makes it worse for, for just the Patriots. receivers. Yeah. Just oh my god, that is a tough one. I think the Lions. Shoot one up. I think the Lions. I'm, I'm taking. I don't know. At least, the, at least the Lions are young. Yeah, you've got. I, I mean, you've got Nikhil Harry is young, and Jacoby Myers is young. Because just because I probably out of, I think Amon Ra is the highest ceiling. I think Aguilar is the best of them. But Jacoby Myers right is now, also right, right now, now, sure. But value yeah. wise, I think you get better value on the Patriots guys, but just overall better. Oh man, There's, they both only have like two guys that I like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, I'll go Lions. Let's ride Lions. Okay. Lions. Moving on. Final team of receivers. Um, I guess like Allen Robinson, I said was confident in maintaining value. A couple of you said overrated. Some of us said underrated. So. I just think he's the guy that produces no matter who his quarterback is. He's got Justin Fields there. He's still, like, I think he's 28, so, like, he's going to have that same kind of – or 27, so he's going to have the same kind of DeAndre Hopkins treatment in a couple of years. But, like, I still really like Allen Robinson. I think he's in the prime of his career. He's going to be a wide receiver one for the next three years at least. Like, I think he's underrated at his value. Uh, I don't like I him as Allen much Robinson as I think Allen Robinson is super overrated. Overrated? Why? I'm just curious. Okay, here's the thing. He's rated wide receiver 14. That's probably a Kobe. He's worth, like, <laughs> wide receiver. He's basically worth as much as Terry McLaurin right now. Um, That's a huge Kobe, that uh, that he's wide receiver 14. He, he's, I mean, he's wide receiver 12 right now and keep trade cut, so... We're gonna have to update the doc real quick. Just saying. Oh, yeah, things things change so quick. Actually, you receivers. know what? You know what? Now that I'm looking at the receivers after him, I'm switching my U two and O. I, I just think that there there are some receivers I like after him. Dude, everyone and their mother always says that <laughs> Allen Robinson is underrated. He's the most underrated guy in the league. Yeah, he was. He's not anymore. Everyone values him like a wide receiver one. I think he has and will be a low-end wide receiver one. But guess what? Like, I- I'm just going to pivot. I- I'm pivoting off Allen Robinson. I, I don't know where he's going to end up. He's going to go to some probably trash team because he wants that huge contract. I-, I think that he's the type of dude that, yeah, he's a good player, but I like. I think that he's a Keenan Allen, but now you can actually actually cash out a wide receiver one price. I don't, so, I don't think he's so here, insanely good. Here's what I'll bring up for wise with my U two and O. Actually, looking at the rankings after him, so the two receivers above him, uh, DeAndre Hopkins and Terry McLaurin, because we we agree Hopkins and McLaurin are yeah. definitely ahead of Allen Robinson. Mm-hmm. 
Um, the receivers after Robinson include uh, DJ Moore, Chris Godwin, T. Higgins, Keenan Allen, Brandon Ayuk, Mike Evans. Uh, yeah, Poole. I mean, I just think he's fairly rated right Ooh. there. Ooh. I think it would those take are a lot of good receivers of after. Players, yeah, I think I think Jake I think Jake's thinking about it a little bit. Those are some nice receivers after him. Yeah, dude. That's, that's the other thing too, though, he has so, he has a play style that I don't know if anyone else thinks this. I do not think Aaron, uh, not Aaron Rodgers, Allen Robinson's play style is going to age very well. Like leading the league consistently in contested catch rate, like. I am not very comfortable with that for a long period of time. Well, isn't DeAndre Hopkins right there too? Yeah, but DeAndre Devontae Hopkins. Adams. See, DeAndre Hopkins is 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 really freaking good. Like DeAndre Hopkins is one of those receivers that is insane at everything. You know, he has great route running. He does have really good contested catches. But dude, you like DeAndre Hopkins is one of the best receivers with the ball in his hands, like on screens and crap. You would not think that for for DeAndre Hopkins. Like, I, Al Robinson, good player, overvalued. Overvalued. It is tough because there's, like, a lot of good receivers I like right around there, that, That's what makes it but tough because there are so many. Really from, like from, like, that 12 to 18, 12 to 20 range, there are so many I like. Yeah. Like, um, Keenan Allen's, like, five or six spots beneath him. All right. Uh, I think the only other one really worth talking about on this team is Darnell Mooney. I, uh, I like Darnell Mooney, but he's starting to get overrated for me. For, 44 for me is fine. I think I, I put a U just because I had to pick one, but I think 44 is around accurate. He should be like in the mid 40 range. Um, yeah, it's crazy, dude. Darnell Mooney, like what a stonks. wild journey to, it has been for the Darnell Mooney stonks. truthers, man. It has been fucking stonks crazy. <laughs> I just feel bad for the Anthony Miller truthers over the past two, three years, man. It's been a rough go at it. I, I don't really know many. I I, I guess they Anthony Miller was got drafted. Hyped. Yeah. Anthony but, Miller was getting hype like during his rookie year. I did see there was something like coach, but it's always coach speak, like, oh, this guy is if you're gonna pick a receiver on the I just team, mean like, like in terms of like within he like was dynasty. Like the, he was the Elijah Moore of that draft class. Yeah. If you like, remember no, yeah. 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 I remember our hyped. dynasty like Loved Anthony Miller. I yeah. think I drafted loved him, Anthony and then Miller. I traded him. You did, or I traded yeah, he... into him, and then traded him. No, you trade, you traded into him, and then you traded him for Todd Gurley. <laughs> rip, rip, my sweet prince. Um. <laughs> all right, well, Darnell Mooney, he's he's rising a lot. I don't know. I at the price he he's going to, I don't really love it. But what's Darnell Mooney's price right now? Like a mid second. Early Dude, second? the thing is, is that you're if you offered every Darnell Mooney owner two hundred five, like I think you'd be hard pressed to find ones to take it. Yeah, I, it's probably, like, it'd probably if, take an early second. I'm just gonna ride the Darnell Mooney train because, dude, I've been on here. Like, I'm not stopping. Yeah. But Frank's got, Frank's got his first class ticket on the on the train. He's, <laughs> he's just taking a nap. He wakes he's up when he gets there. <laughs> but you're right. Like, if you want to sell out, like this could easily be one of those Dante Pettis scenarios where it's like the dude oh, had no. like two you, good highlights, and I'm, all of a sudden could, everyone's yeah. You could I pivot him to o, OBJ. Like it's I not. It's not hard to pivot him though. Yeah, I always get scared. Who's going to be like the next like Dante Pettis or just one of those receivers where it's like promising rookie year, then just. Ooh. All right, um, let's finally wrap it up with tight ends. Um, the Packers have Robert Tunyon, who is tight end sixteen. Jay Sternberger, tight end fifty three. On the Vikings, Irv Smith Jr. ten. Zach Davidson not ranked. T.J. Hawkinson, tight end five. Uh, Darren Fowles not ranked. Cole Komet, tight end 12. Jimmy Graham, not ranked. I mean, this is kind of hard to put, like, an overrated, underrated backup. Can yeah. I start here? Yeah, go ahead. The backup tone, especially. I'm going to start off with the must-own tight end in this division, and that is my guy, half punter, half tight end, Zach Davidson. What? Zach Davidson <laughs> is free, and he's actually good. Like, I thought he was a good player when I watched his tape back. Like, dude moves well. He's big. He's athletic. I mean, people are going to scoff at him because he was also the punter. But, like, this dude is a good player. And I think the Irv Smith is a massive bait. Pick him up in our league right now, then. 
Pick them up in our league. I don't have yeah. roster spots, dude. Yeah, yeah. You don't I don't have roster, roster spots. spots. You love him so much, you don't know, roster him. <laughs> He's literally free. Yeah, he is free. I can pick him up when I want to. My team no, is too good. I need Frank, someone Frank, to Frank and probably Strat- to be distraction above him. I I can't. I do. The thing is, is that I can't get anyone off of my taxi, and like I can't get anyone into my taxi because I'm roster locked. Oh, you haven't been able to. Uh, have- oh. I have too many good players on my team. Like I, I I would move him right now. For Zach Davidson, I can't. I'd have to drop someone good. Yeah, you have to make a couple drops. Okay. Um, with this, uh, so we can start. We all said Robert Tanya in a tight end 16 was underrated. Um, 16 just a little bit too low. Um, I can see the argument for and against Robert Tanya. But when push comes to shove, I think he has enough talent to climb out of the wasteland. Yeah, I think he has. I think he has enough Aaron Rodgers to climb out of the way. <laughs> he, he's got one year of Aaron Rodgers, and that's the issue. Like, he's got one year of Aaron Rodgers, and then it's done. It's, I still like Tanya because I mean, assuming Devontae Adams leaves too, those targets are pretty much up for grabs in Green Bay. I mean, the only person, um, yeah, but that team is just going to be in shambles. No, but the, the, I think that Tanya's a good player, though. Like he shows a lot of really good traits for I, a tight I like end. Tanya. He's got. No, I like the Gassi. player, but then. But He's got Higby and Gesicki ahead of him. He's got Higby and Gesicki ahead of him, who I think have no business being ahead of him. So give me Tunyon there. But and I guess uh, I'm uh, we could move on and pivot. I'm not big on Irv Smith, so like give me Tunyon above him too. But we all have Irv Smith, Smith is the most yeah. overrated. Yeah. I'm the Irv Smith owner, and I still think he's so overrated. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I was going to say that is ridiculous. The guy's done you nothing. You, you Reese Morris, like if you're him. listening, man, come on. You, you're. I'm telling you, man. I'm not this, the only one that thinks Irv Smith is overrated. Like, that's like close to his peak price. Like, if he goes yeah. off this year, is he going up that much higher? Like, like no. Okay, right. what is going off? Not what is going right. off for Irv Smith Jr.? Yeah, if, he finishes, yards? if he finishes as like tight end five, <laughs> if he finishes tight end five, I think he moves up to tight end like seven. It's, it's still, it's, the thing it's is, though, I saw a study on Twitter. I wish I could give credit to who it was. Um, it's someone, someone good, whoever you are. You're, you're the man where it was like to be w- one of the top tight ends, you basically need a hundred targets or a crap ton of touchdowns. Oh, and the crap I saw ton of too. touchdowns only happens to Robert Tanyan. Basically. I don't think Irv Smith is getting a hundred targets. It's crazy. No. There's bro. not enough targets to go around in that offense between Jefferson Especially when you have in. half punter, half tight end Zach Davidson in there. No shot. I'll run for a second. If we don't <laughs> see a Zach Davidson fake punt this year, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. I, I know who you're talking about for two Frank and I'm trying to look him up to give him credit. But um yeah, I I, I actually like Irv Smith's talent, but tight end ten is too high for me. Um, Jay Sternberger, he's a bait, right? He's yeah, I'm not bait. I'm not a Sternberger guy. Okay, let's move on mm-hmm. to the real topic because okay, we, we all kind of for the most part agree that Robert Tunyon's undervalued to a certain extent. You know, obviously like not Four that we think he's point. a crazy good tight end, but he should be higher than tight end sixteen. That Irv Smith is overrated. He should probably be at like tight end 16. But TJ Hawkinson, I have seen, has been a massive debate on Twitter, on Reddit, everywhere. Is TJ Hawkinson a legit number one tight end? Is he that solidified top five guy, or is he a glorified? I mean, saying a Mark Andrews, like I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but is he just is he a bait or not? Are you asking if he's closer to Mark Andrews or closer to that top four tier? Is he closer to Andrews or Kittle? Long, like realistically, if you Andrews. were to bet, Andrews, to Andrews or Kittle, you oh, think Andrews? To Andrews? Yeah, not even close. But he, at he the was... same, he's closer to Andrews. But at the same time, I still think he can be your long-term tight end. I like, t- give you like I like T.J. Like T.J. Hawkinson. Production. I'm a believer. Being, in uh, being uh, Mark, An- the thing is, being Mark Andrews is not like uh, you know, not an insult. No, yeah. The guy's been a top tight end yeah. for the past three seasons and will continue to be that. I just don't think he's ever going to hit that quote unquote, like elite tight end of the kit, the Kelsey. Yeah. That, that's the, kiddo, the argument, right? Is the, it going to be the, that the, the yeah. Kyle Pitts? Like mm-hmm. he's not going to be that, but he can be the next tier. You know, he can be the market. You, you don't think he can't put up a thousand yards or like 950 I, yards. I, 
The only this would way be here to do it. The only way he reaches the next level is just a massive amount of touchdowns, and I just don't see it happening in the Detroit offense. He, I like Hawk, dude. I like Hawk. I think he's I like good. Hawk. I like Hawk, but I'm saying he's Mark Andrews. That's not an insult. Like I said, that is not an insult. That is a big time compliment. The guy's going to be a top seven tight end. I think he's locked into that, like completely uh, locked. Into I that. think you guys think, are both kind of right. Wait, what are you going to say, JT? I think he can get up to like 850 yards a year, which is not like an incredible jump, but like it is higher. I, but he, he's just going to be stuck in that where it's like. The, the offense isn't going to go through him. I, I know that there's not, like, a whole lot of people around him. I still just don't think, like, he's that kind of guy that the offense will go through TJ Hawkinson. And that's what you need him to be Yeah. if he's going to be in that. So that's, that's just the issue. Yeah, you're right. And it's you're not right. going to change. Um, I like the Hawk, dude. I think that he's just better than Mark Andrews. I, I agree with you guys that he doesn't there. have the super ceiling, which is his problem. But I do think that if you need a very stable tight end one, that TJ Hawkinson's going to be a guy that's a top five tight end for years and years to come. All right. Well, um, I guess we could finish it off with Cole Komet and then the, the teams most likely outperform and underperform. Um, I I think he's underrated just because, like, you have the likes of Irv Smith and Adam Chapman above him. And I think he's, like, the better guy of those, so those three – they're um, so close. They are close, but he he'd be my pick. What is the guys. price for a Cole Komet or a Troutman right now? Troutman, I feel like is, is kind of inflated. Like Cole Komet, who? What do you like? I don't know anyone that's selling Cole Komet. Troutman's value is very. Troutman's value is yeah. very inflated right now, just because of the Michael Thomas news just happening, and there's yeah. like we just there's not a lot of targets there in in uh, in New Orleans, so his value is inflated for sure. Um, Cole Komet, I think he's a similar type of player. I don't know. Like, I'm not ready to rule Jimmy Graham out of here. Like, he's going to be on the field. Like, I don't think he's worth anything in Dynasty in terms of that, but he's going to be on the field. He's still, a, you know, an NFL player that's going to take snaps away from Cole Komet. I mean, if I, obviously I'm not owning him over Cole Komet. Don't, don't twist my words here, but Jimmy Graham is going to be relevant. You're gonna, there's going to be a few games where Jimmy Graham scores. He's going to score touchdowns. He's a big guy. Well, yeah, Cole Komet's definitely a tight end play for the future. Like, you're expecting Cole Komet not really to produce this year, but next year when you think, okay, Allen Robinson's going to be gone, Jimmy Graham's going to be gone. If you like um, Justin Fields, like, okay, Justin Fields is is legit. Um, I mean, they had that sick tight end at Ohio State last year, too, that produced with Justin Fields. So, like, that's yeah. kind of what you're thinking is next year Cole Komet's the dude, you know, and he's that guy that can – maybe be what Goddard is or what people want Goddard to be, right? A guy that's kind of been marinating for a couple of years and finally hits that decent tight end one rank. I like Cole Komet. It's just he's, he's the tight end really position, weird. Is, the tight end position in general is weird because it's all about just projecting. It's always like, yeah. oh, this guy had the draft capital in him and Herb Smith – you know, Troutman, Komet, they were all second and third round picks in the NFL draft. And you're just projecting targets here. Who's, That's what who's it all a higher seems price right now, Komet or um, or the Muth? Oh, they're right next to each other. I would, if I needed a tight end as a rebuilding team, which we kind of do, and these are guys I want to target. I would target Komet and Fryer Muth for a second round pick. If I, I if like I needed a lot of help at tight end and was a halfway decent team, so I'm thinking that second could be kind of somewhat late, like a back half of the league second. I think that those are two players to pick up to marinate. Yeah, I got nothing to add there. I don't disagree. All right. We are almost all across the board in NFC team most likely to overperform. Um, I said the Lions. Jake said the Vikings. Frank and Luna said uh, the Packers. Um, I don't know. I, I just think – I guess I'll talk on my guys and then Jake can go and then Frank and Luna, you can share – with the Lions, I think all the receivers are, are in the dumps, and at least someone's coming out of there. Well, good. Jared That's Goff's fine. quarterback, 28. Um, you know, we Frank gave the good point of, like, we could see three years of Jared Goff on the Lions. Um, and I'd have him over a good chunk of quarterbacks currently in the NFL. Um, run back, we know my DeAndre Swift love. I don't really need to hop on it. And Hawkinson, I think, is just 
fine and fairly valued where he is. So there's no one I really think is like over overvalued other than maybe Amon Ra, but um, uh, there's a lot of players I think are undervalued. So that's if that I'm offense getting. ends up being average, yeah, or even just not bottom twelve <laughs> yeah. in the league, then you're right. Then they overperform. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me picking the Packers, uh, they were a couple of different players that kind of came into it. Like I, and we all thought a like, few of these guys were under Robert Tanyan's rating or, or ranking, uh, Aaron Jones ranking, Aaron Rodgers ranking. And then I personally like Lazard and Amari Rodgers. Uh, so that's mostly what went behind my Packers pick there. I think the offense is still going to be one of the most higher scoring in the league this upcoming season. Um, that, that's it's not super complex. That's pretty much my main logic behind it. There are a few guys that that were too low. I changing mine to the Vikings. Oh, yeah, uh, you, the Vikings. You, you trade the Vikings. Kirk Cousins being quarterback twenty four is just way too low. And then those receivers. I think Thielen was wide receiver forty six. Yeah, if you're crazy. telling me I can get him for a wide receiver forty six price, well, I don't even know what that is. What Darno is that? It's, Exactly. Like he, the upside of Adam Thielen is very high um, for that price. He can he can finish a you know a wide receiver one this year. I mean, long term, obviously he's aging out, and and Justin Jefferson is the number one receiver there. Um, but lead, that leads right into Jefferson. That he, you guys had him as underrated as the wide receiver one. So I did. That just should show how how much we believe in this offense and and how much they could actually how good they can actually be um all right well then if that's good we can move on then to team most likely to overperform or i mean underperform sorry um i flip side of you lunas i said the packers i think the reason is that, that we're we're not talking about enough is they scored frank mentioned it a little bit about touchdown regression like do, they scored, they scored yeah, so much. Are, they scored 64 yeah, touchdowns there, last year. Are, are yeah, that's rankings, not going to happen again. Yeah, but I'm going to say, are their rankings uh, kind of me- look like a team that just scored that many touchdowns? It's pretty similar in the L- terms Lotus. of Lotus. That's why I changed the JTs. I remembered that. Yeah. 64 Lotus. touchdowns is like top yeah. 10 history, NFL history. Yeah, oh. but I'm saying they're not being ranked like that besides maybe Adams. Like uh, Lotus, Rogers, this... Rogers is QB. Well, now it's 13, but it was 18. Look, yeah. the ADPs are just starting to rise on yeah. these, yeah. Yeah. these few days now that Rogers and is back. Give it another few days, and it, the, the, these rank Aaron Jones is going to be rated higher. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to be rated higher. Randall Monty Cobb Adams. is going to be rated a lot higher. Yeah, you know. But then I guess, <laughs> it, it, I guess it depends that. how much higher they go. I would need to see the new rankings. I'm, I, I filled this in like earlier when I just had the older one, so it depends how I, much. I'm going to join up. you, JT. I'm gonna join. Oh, you. welcome to the club, Frank. JT, <laughs> Frank you are just all the way around. you are just a poison. Uh, you're a menace. <laughs> but he's he's right though. I'm, like I'm it's just a good word. They're not scoring 64 touchdowns. They might score like, dude. I'm telling you, like touchdowns are super inconsistent with quarterbacks. I was looking at a lot of quarterback data. It's like if you can just consistently score more than like 27 touchdowns every year, you are a great quarterback. Aaron Rodgers threw over 50. I'm pretty sure. Like, it's These just so hard. Durant. And you're not going to play COVID defenses again. What, what is that? And you're not going to play the super decimated 49ers uh, on prime card. time and get a 9,000 touchdowns in the first half. Do, do you guys know Do you guys know Aaron Rodgers in the previous two years threw for 26 and 25 touchdowns, and he played all 16 games. That's a 20. He almost doubled his touchdowns last year. It's just an insane, insane stat to look at. It. All right, but we're, we're running really late here. Why is why are yeah. the Bears the the most likely to underperform and then we're off? They're the, oh, Bears. the Bears. Do I have to say anything um, else? They're the Bears. I, I thought. <laughs> I think I think if they leave Andy Dalton in for a lot of the season, it's not going to go well. I know Frank, you said you liked him. I really do not think Andy Dalton's a good quarterback. It, right liked now. him is a relative term. Um, <laughs> yeah, <that's fair. laughs> um, and my belief is they're going to start him for a while. I just don't like that situation. Uh, Allen Robinson's a little bit high at wide receiver fourteen. Um. It was hard to pick an obvious one. I don't think they're going to be like terrible, terrible, but it's mostly their quarterback situation and their coaching staff. That's GM. That makes me say the Bears. All right. Well, those were all of our divisional breakdowns now in the books. 
Uh, next week we'll be coming uh, at also, you. Also, also Fields being QB nine. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Um, next week we're coming at you with our. Uh, we'll be leading right into the preseason game, first NFL preseason game. Uh, the season's upon us, guys. Like we're looking forward to it. Uh, comment, like, subscribe on YouTube, Twitter, follow us, podcast, rate and review us. Uh, we really appreciate all the help that everyone has been doing and supporting us. Um, we're looking into making a, a live listener league, so keep on. Yeah, let us know yeah. if you want to join. Yeah, keep uh, on the lookout for that if you're interested. You can beat um, JT. If you, want to get smacked, if you want to beat Lunas and get smacked by me, go ahead. Um, <laughs> all right. Episode 47 in the books. Thank you, everyone.